the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Every prophetic word that is declared in this ministry um, is a word that comes from the bowels of intimacy with the spirit. They are not suggestions. If God doesn't say anything, we don't have to give a word just because it's a new year. Praise the Lord. And um, I was excited personally. I had to pray this into my life, believing the word of God. The word of God that is spoken is not what will bring results. It is the word of God that is believed. The spoken word has potentials for power but is barren in itself until it comes into a heart that is full of faith the bible calls it a good soil there are bad soils the seed may not be bad but in the parable of the sower the bible teaches us that the soil can be bad and that even among the good soils there are three kinds of results 30 fold 60 fold and a hundredfold hallelujah i'll start tonight by will be very fast god will grant us grace in jesus name let's examine the verses that have served as a basis let me teach you something up front it doesn't matter what you hear from god or hear from the spirit you must have a scripture that validates and verifies it Otherwise, no matter how accurate it is, it is not worthy of your believing. Is that true? That you heard from God does not mean you just carry a word and give people. There must be a scriptural reference. The Bible is a compendium of God's character. It reveals to us how God works. Are we together now? You may not directly find a verse that talks about everything. But you can find a verse that agrees with this. That this is consistent it is the way god will behave are we together now so when we give scriptures this is not just some kind of debate no it is that our faith will not rest on the wisdom of men you can believe that this is a year of signs and wonders just because you respect the man that said he had god but i'm switching you from much more than just believing in my hearing god to believing the integrity of god's word because it is the word that will cause God to be committed in your life. Hallelujah. Psalm 77, please. Four scriptures very quickly. Psalm 77 and verse 14 to 15. I hope the media is ready for us. Psalm 77 and verse 14 to 15. Psalm 77 verse 14. 15 is projected can we read together one to read thou art the god that doest wonders thou hast declared thy strength among thy people uh-huh thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people the sons of jacob and joseph the bible says that god is the doer of wonders thou art the god that doeth wonders not speak it wonders not suggest it it is an office in god among the many things he is there is a name that he is the god that can do wonders hallelujah jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 20 to 22 if we can have that in amplified that will be fine very powerful scripture when i found this scripture it blessed me in no small way and I hope that it will bless you. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 20 to 22. Amplified. 
it says who wrought signs and wonders let's read together aha uh -huh. in the land of egypt and even to this day continues to do so both in israel and among other men and made for yourself a name as it is this day you go ahead uh-huh israel out of the land of egypt with what signs and wonders with a strong hand and outstretched arm and with great terror 22 and you gave them this land which you swore to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey not only is he a god that does wonders that he can deliver men through signs and wonders and in case you know i like the way the bible puts it because many people will look at this as a historical book and say oh god did it before but he says he continues to do so not just in ancient israel but even among his people exodus chapter 15 blessed be the name of the lord And verse 11 exodus 15 verse 11 we sing it in hymns we sing it in our praise worship songs but a few people have taken out time to look at the revelation that is in this verse let's read it together one to read who is like unto thee O lord among the gods who is like unto thee you are glorious in holiness you are fearful in praises doing not did wonders doing doing is something you have not stopped you've made up your mind to continue doing it doing who is like unto you some people did wonders before but they died and it stopped it says you are not only glorious in holiness you are not only fearful in praises that you are doing wonders one last scripture acts chapter 5 and verse 12 to 16 acts chapter 5 and verse 12 to 16 acts chapter 5 and verse 12 to 16 want to read and by the hand of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all in one accord in solomon's porch we're reading to verse 16 and of the rest does no man join himself to them but the people magnified them and believers were the more added to the Lord uh -huh. and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing the last verse bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed how many everyone the sign is not the healing the sign is everyone the healing was not commonplace but this dimension that every single one comes with a challenge and every single one returns this one is more than a healing it is a sign it is a message are we together now write this down what are signs and wonders very quickly just to give us um, a little foundation signs and wonders are supernatural manifestations of God's power really they are they are miracle signs and wonders supernatural manifestations of God's power by which God demonstrates his ability to save to deliver to preserve and to prosper his people I'll take it again 
signs and wonders are supernatural manifestations of God's power by which he God demonstrates his ability to save to deliver to preserve and to prosper his people manifestations of God's power that are statements they demonstrate his ability they validate his ability to save to heal to preserve to prosper his people another definition signs and wonders are tokens or representations of the omnipotence of God signs and wonders are tokens a token is a representation they are representations of the omnipotence the almightiness all powerfulness of God they are manifestations of God's power they are tokens or representations of his omnipotence now all through scripture when you read down from Genesis to Revelations you see that the Bible is full of the strange acts of God signs and wonders mighty works of God right from Genesis down to Revelations the Bible is full of God doing mighty things in and among his people and through his people to the earth the subject of signs and wonders is not a subject that should be strange to believers because Christianity in itself was founded upon this mystery of signs and wonders hallelujah I missed one more definition let me add to you if you care signs and wonders are pointers to a dimension of God that he wants the world and the saints to experience signs and wonders are pointers to a dimension of God that he wants the world and the saints to experience they are pointers to a dimension of God that he wants the world and the saints to experience very very powerful like I said earlier on the Bible is full of signs and wonders the way God made man in Genesis the way God made the plants the mystery that happened in Laban's house with Jacob Joshua commanding the Sun to stand still the walls of Jericho the parting of the Red Sea the parting of the Jordan all kinds of miracles that happen in the Bible the miraculous outstretched arm of God to restore the economy of a nation overnight mighty things the Bible records that God did in his people and through his people there are two Greek words that I want us to just work with very quickly the Bible is an interplay of a lot of Greek words and in the New Testament particularly there are two Greek words that are translated signs and wonders the first is the word semion s-e-m-e-i-o-n 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 it literally means a sign an evidence of a divine commission the word semion is a Greek word it means an evidence of a divine commission an attestation of a divine message the word semion that is translated sign refers to miracles by which God authenticates the men sent by him and the missions directed by him give us Acts chapter 16 and verse 17 to 18 we find an expression there Jesus himself was speaking about the church Acts chapter 16 verse 17 and 18 oh, did I say Acts? I'm sorry Mark Mark 16 I beg your pardon Mark 16 wonders miracles 
by which God authenticates men and missions not just men the man can be sent by God but the assignment he's embarking on is not by God so God would defend the man and leave the assignment alone it matters that both the man and mission are sent by God he says and this sign shall follow them that believe and these signs and these signs and these signs he would have said and these miracles the signs are miracles but they have messages attached to them and the messages have to be discerned they are pointers he says this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues 18 they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover the bible says these things are not just miracles they are signs they authenticate among other things that god is with that individual are we together now a man can fake some of them but whoever has all of them working in him is a validation there are aspects of these signs that cannot be faked you see let me tell you something with satan the operation of satan is such that he can take part of a truth and use it to destroy but the test is the ability to convey the whole counsel of god not part of it are we together now when satan came and met eve what he said was not entirely a lie it was truth that was aberrated when he came and met jesus it was not a lie but there was a motif behind it an attempt to destroy jesus so he says when you see all these signs happen to an individual you can fake tongues you can fake healing the sick but when a viper beats you you see that one that that one is not you can't pretend that one you can act drama praying in tongues you can't act drama of snake biting you and then nothing happens and you see the serpent is talking about here is first physical then prophetic are we together yes first physical he says that i give you authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions not a little scorpion you don't need all that to kill a scorpion and carry a shoe and kill it but he's talking about scorpion wicked demonic entities that plague the lives of people per second are we together it is possible these are the same mysteries that the psalmist said they are arrows that fly by day that a man can be moving and something can make contact with your spirit man but there is an immunity that have been built like paul they looked at him they said you have seen against the gods let's watch after a while when they saw nothing they said this guy you are not you are a god you are not normal that's a sign there is a message conveyed in it that there are bodies that are terrestrial but there are also other bodies that are celestial and that even among the stars one differed from another in glory signs the second word is the word that is called terata t-e-a-r-t-a t-e-a-r-t-a that's the word that is translated wonders terata t-e-a-r-t-a is the word that the bible translates in english in the new testament as wonders and let me tell you what it means it literally means wonder causing events wonder causing events no wonder bishop Oedeko, um, um says wonder is what makes you wonder it really is the meaning that's the definition wonder causing events events that are so notable your pride cannot stand it you know there are things that happen and people assume i've seen this one before a wonder is what will compel you to react and respond over that situation there is a way god blesses you that you claim oh god i just give you thanks casually you've done this before just like it came yesterday but there is a way god blesses you that you become too grateful to keep quiet is that true 
wonder causing events that produce astonishment in the beholder wonder causing events that produce astonishment in the believer mark chapter 5 and verse 40 to 42 please give it to us mark chapter 5 and verse 40 to 42 wonder causing events that cause astonishment and they laughed at him to scorn this is jesus about to walk not just a miracle but a wonder the bible says they laughed at him to scorn but when he had put them all out he taken the father and the mother of the damsel that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying we are reading to 42 and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her talitha kumi which being interpreted damsel i say unto you arise 42 and straightway the damsel arose remember they were laughing before that time and walked and she was of the age of 12 years and they were all astonished some versions say with great wonder they were astonished with a great astonishment a wonder was released in heaven and the bible says there was silence for 30 minutes because of the gravity and the magnitude there are things that God is going to be doing in our lives, brothers and sisters, that people will come and stand here and not be able to testify. And, and listen, nobody will drive them because the silence is the testimony. That someone will stand and say, I, I have always known God would do this, but not in this dimension. When God wants to give a wonder, he waits till your enemies gather. He won't do it in their absence he allows them to gather and while they are talking and say jesus died they see the resurrected jesus they are talking about his death and he has risen no blood in his body but still walking wonder are we together it's not his being alive he's been alive without blood say wonder he said touch me bring bread let me eat but the bible said the life of the flesh is in the blood so how are you living what are you breathing do you have lungs he said i'm giving you another life as my father has sent me that there is a possibility that you are immune to certain things if jesus did it in heaven will understand in this territory i believe the word of god oh. wonder events wonder god has already done great things koinonia is a family that we have seen humbling dimensions of his wonder but brothers and sisters you are not ready for what god is about to do believe me you are not ready for what god is about to do we have seen god gather crowds without posters it's not publicity it's a wonder it's a wonder there is no single hand bill there is no single poster to put in your car it's a mystery my brother i have read church history i have read revivals men are not idiots there is a force that draws them we have seen the wonders of god Seventy-one thousand followers on facebook not being on air one with no video released is a wonder the message is going everywhere regardless of people having self-appointed evangelists running around these messages they have never been here but they move from nation to nation it's not a miracle it's a wonder there are statements in them i am the god who can do as i please are we together wonder causing events that produce astonishment astonishment mark chapter 7 verse 37 let's hurry up mark chapter 7 and verse 37 mark 7 37 the bible says and they were beyond measure astonished saying he had done all things well how many things let me tell you when every area of your life goes well it's a wonder because it's not supposed to be the story of people 
Naman's situation is how men live. There must be something in their life that has a K leg. But my God is saying in this season, there's something. I'm, I'm leaving the ones I have touched and saying, where is the area in your life that mocks me? I want to make a statement in your life. They said he had done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. He has done all things well. Done all things well. Oh, we are wealthy but no child. When the God of wonders shows up. Look at what the prophet said. When the prophet was speaking to the Shunammite woman, he said, Watch what is wrong. I know the ones that are right. Let's, let's focus on where there is an issue. Do you want me to talk to the governor? He said, no, no. I live among my people and the servant discern. He said, this woman is a great woman. However, there is an issue in her life. And the prophet said, by this time, according to the time of life, I program a possibility in your life that you will carry a child. The God of wonders, not just the God of miracles. If you don't believe the God of wonders, get said to be part of this weeping holocaust that is humbling the pride of people. There is a God of wonders. There is a God of wonders. Let me tell you, science will fail men in this season. The theories that have been built for decades that attempt to compete with God will bring people to their knees. But there are people that God will arise on their case. And he will say, I have always known God can bless. That what God will do in your life will make somebody come and apologize. And say, I, I am sorry, I didn't believe in you. Let me confess. I, it's, I, I know you were part of Koinonia, but if they told me this, what God will do in your life, I won't believe it. He said, I will walk a walk in your days. That if you were told, you will not believe. Listen. Brothers and sisters, let me borrow the words of Bishop David Oyedepo. God is changing people's levels in a way and a dimension that will surprise you. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's not a lie. This is what God can do. What is the purpose of signs and wonders? why do we need them so much so that god would declare that a whole year is dedicated to experiencing that dimension of him what is the purpose of signs and wonders i want you to know that signs and wonders have a specific purpose in kingdom advancement there is a role that only signs and wonders can play in kingdom advance a few of them number one to believers and to unbelievers i'm going to tell you now to those who believe who already know that jesus is alive and they have tasted of his power and his unfailing love signs and wonders become to them a consolation of their faith in god are we together the purpose of signs and wonders there are many preachers that mock believers for looking for signs and wonders and they say believers should be the proof producers i agree but the fact that you are a proof producer does not mean you should not be a benefactor no matter what dimension you get to in god god still remains a god of signs and wonders to those whose hearts are open there needs to be a consolation to your christian experience they kept seeing the miracles of jesus in the nation of israel and i thought he would say i've shown you enough but every time the bible says his messes are new every morning why wouldn't he say think about yesterday's own signs and wonders consolations to my faith that i believed god i trusted him to move in this dimension and he arose in majesty and made a name for himself through my life that's a sign and a wonder The signs and wonders are produced on earth by God through believers. But they are not just for unbelievers. Believers also, like the, the husband man being the first partaker. Believers are not only producers of signs and wonders. They are also benefactors of the same.
to unbelievers what is the purpose of signs and wonders it is the physical expression of God's power God's love and God's goodness creating convictions in them and ultimately leading them to Jesus I'll take it again to unbelievers what is the purpose of signs and wonders it is the physical expression of God's power love and goodness creating convictions in them and ultimately leading them to Jesus unbelievers need a manifestation of signs and wonders from and by God through believers first in their lives and then through them to affect unbelievers why because they need to be convicted and they need to come to Jesus now please look up signs and wonders in themselves do not produce transformation only the Word of God in partnership with the Holy Spirit can produce conviction because when you read in the Gospels they saw all kinds of miracles yet when Jesus resurrected the Bible says some doubted even among his disciples they saw the dead rise they multiplied loaves some of them were the ones who packed the bread yet they ran away so signs and wonders in themselves now this is the balance signs and wonders in themselves do not produce transformation if all a believer sees is signs and wonders you get a job you get a new promotion God opens up a door for you you step into unusual levels of the anointing as powerful as that is there are people that will still not be transformed by it however however signs and wonders support your journey to creating convictions when you watch signs and wonders at work they probe your convictions and all the insult in the name of God and insult of the body of Christ all of a sudden signs and wonders bring you to a point as a believer where your convictions are strengthened and as an unbeliever creates in you the need to surrender your heart to Jesus write this down all manifestations of signs and wonders must lead to the harvest of souls and the establishment of men and women in the things of God all manifestations of signs and wonders genuine manifestations of signs and wonders they must lead people it must lead to a harvest of souls and it must establish people in Christ no matter what happens in your life if it does not lead to these two things then it is profitless the message behind signs and wonders is that they are it is a system of attraction much more than a statement God is making through it he's drawing the lost to himself and he's keeping the saints to be established in him hallelujah when people go to a herbalist number one they are not committed to the herbalist they go there to see signs they sit down and say mr man i have a problem do something for me and all of a sudden a chicken appears from the air and he holds it and keeps it down what do we call that that's not a discussion it's a sign and by that sign the two people were discussing whether they made a mistake coming to this herbalist and all of a sudden by that manifestation they find grounds to convince themselves that we're in the right place is that true so when someone comes for koinonia and while he's hearing the word he's wondering well i've had this thing before is this what is going to give us all of this thing what is all this and all of a sudden while he's talking a vision is open for him and he's seeing his barren wife with twins he keeps quiet by himself and he said continue the statement he said no i saw something that has challenged me it's amazing that when believers gather like this you would think everybody believes what you believe until god grants you access to their minds there are people who 
before they come for koinonia they tell god certain things and say lord you better give me a sign i've been I've, I've hated every man of god and i hope that i won't hate this one too and while they are sitting down right from opening prayer fire on the mountain some the sign is that they find themselves on the floor ah what happened they get up and they're trying to be arrogant and then it happens again then it happens the third time then they give up and lie down there and god says this is holy ground they get up quietly now it's not that god wants to just throw people is that to that person it happened before his unbelieving father or mother and then the guy goes back the next time he sees people falling around he says don't insult everybody there are exceptions god is still mighty he can make it happen signs i remember i think we were in joss maybe this was 2016 or thereabout when joss i was ministering in one of the polytechnics and while I was ministering, you know, the power of God, people were getting healed, getting saved, getting delivered. And the Holy Spirit ministered to me and said, there are a number of people here who are doubting if this thing is really working. And those people themselves are not feeling fine. So I want to heal them now. You see, that's no longer a miracle. That is a sign. And then the Lord said, announce it first before I heal them. And I said, there are people here who are doubting this thing and it may not be your fault you came from a background where it's a norm to doubt everything that is supernatural and the lord is healing you now and there was a gentleman who got healed i can't remember what he got healed from very spectacular miracle and then when he came to the front he said honestly honestly let me confess if not that this thing has happened to me now i will go back believing that these men play you know games and all of that signs signs is is good to clap for somebody but when it, the miracle comes to your own house it be, he said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled this is the dimension i'm trusting that god will take us to because some of the things we teach it has not happened to some of us so you don't hate it but you don't exactly believe it when we say favor, you don't hate it, but you don't exactly believe it. The anointing, you don't hate it, but you don't exactly believe it. But when it happens through your hands or to your life, you don't care who doesn't believe you again. It's a conviction. Signs and wonders. Are important because according to scriptures I wrote down a few things here they have always been God's strategy and instrument of deliverance from oppression and slavery every time God's people are in any kind of oppression or slavery the instruments that God uses to bring the people out of it it's called signs and wonders one of our texts, Jeremiah 32, from verse 21 to 22. It says, Thou broughtest them out of Egypt by signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are instruments of deliverance. Number two, signs and wonders are validations to the power, the might, and the lordship of Jesus Christ. Signs and wonders are validations to the power the might and the lordship of jesus christ give us acts chapter 2 verse 22 and verse 36 let's look at it quickly acts chapter 2 verse 22 and verse 36 thank you jesus ye men of israel hear these words jesus of nazareth a man approved of god by what help me read on a man approved of god by miracles and wonders and signs which god did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves know so jesus a man approved of god signs wonders miracles verse 36 it says therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly 
that God had made that same Jesus that was approved with signs and wonders whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ signs and wonders validate the Lordship of Christ they validate the lordship of Christ. The Bible says, listen carefully. It says that the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. It doesn't mean you don't eat and drink in God's kingdom. But it's not in meat and drink. But in righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Is that true? And then, oh, I, I'm not sure that's the scripture. I, um, what's the scripture? The demonstration, thank you. The demonstration of quotes that scripture for me. That your faith will not be in the wisdom of men. Many of you don't know how to quote scriptures. You are looking at me and hoping those in front will help you quote it. You better learn scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> see how clueless some people are I don't even I don't have an idea of I just know that Jesus is Lord that's bad that's bad for a believer don't, don't do that kind of less fair Christianity whilst it is not the quoting of the scripture that releases power but it gives the Holy Spirit the tools with which to walk in you hallelujah yes no the, the kingdom of God is not in words but in power. Demonstration of power. Oh, that's it. God bless you. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. And then it says that your faith, am I right? That's, yes, should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Let me tell you something. There's too much talk in the body of Christ. There needs to be validations of these claims otherwise a time will come when they will just classify us as noisemakers noisemakers that we say God can heal God can bless God can prosper Elijah called the people up to Mount Carmel and said look look we've been talking for a very long time the God that answers by fire let him be God very simple if Baal be God let him prove himself if the God of heaven be God, let him prove himself. You start. And the people gathered round and danced and caught themselves till evening. And Elijah mocked them. He said, shout loud, I'm sure he's sleeping. And when it was time, he brought 12 stones and put water and did all of that and called on heaven. And God came. The Bible says the fire came, licked the sacrifice, licked the water and everything. And it was demonstrated as a sign in Israel that the God of heaven was and is God indeed there are people we need to silence not by argument and debate but by a strange manifestation of the hand of God in our life that someone looks at you and says, all these koinonia people is because you are jobless then God gives you a job that is the prayer point of someone for 10 years and you become committed with it and God says it's not because they are jobless it's because they love me are we together are you ready for these dimensions of God this year? Three keys to commanding signs and wonders. This is very important. This is where your, your own role comes in. There must be a part that shows you your own contribution. Three keys. Number one, the first key if you want to truly experience and command signs and wonders is intimacy with God the first key non-negotiable intimacy with God through prayers through the study of the word and through worship listen during my retreat the Lord spoke to me and said that believers must restore the altar of worship we have restored the altar of prayer but we have not restored the altar of personal worship very few believers understand the mystery and the power of prayer and we preachers are the ones who have caused it we have made it look like if you are praying and i'm worshiping and i can't hear any noise from your own end you are wasting god's time 
So we, we pride ourselves in the dissipation of energy for a long time to mean that that is necessarily a sign of making spiritual contact. No, sir. The ministry of personal worship. In church, we praise God. In church, we worship God. But most people have been robbed of the revelation of intimacy through worship. There is intimacy through prayer. There is intimacy through encounter with the word. But there is intimacy through worship. There is no one man on earth that works mightily under the influence of the anointing that does not understand the mystery of the altar of worship. Intimacy with God. Please hear me. God is not a magician. This is the year you must engage in being close to God. This Christianity of today I am close to God tomorrow I'm not serious with God and you say God is not you know that I don't have a job you must make up your mind this year that Lord it is me and you not just me and your power alone intimacy with God there are people who have been in church maybe some koinonia for years they don't know God they don't know anything about God where are you going at a go church and when you finish, where are you coming from? From service. Say, you mean you're a worker in that church? That's yes, oh, all we join, honestly, at least. We, they do have small, small. That statement is an ungodly statement. This is the year you will bury that statement in the name of Jesus Christ. The average believer, listen to me, the average believer should be on fire for God, not for the purpose of ministry, for your own good. Let me tell you the truth. The deeper and thicker the darkness, the more you must define where you stand with God. There is no vagueness. No. You know, they have this sarcasm towards believers that the more we are outspoken about our love for God, the more we fail in life. Is that true? So this becomes the basis for being ashamed. When they are talking of poor people, they say this this poor guy who loves God. When they are talking about certain things, so many of us don't want to show our zeal and passion. We love God, but when you come where there are other people, you just say, Ah, me, I don't overdo. God knows I do my thing. Even God knows that. And then we find all kinds of scriptures in the Bible that says, Don't know, be over righteous. I say, Prove this. That some of those things are, are proofs of people who don't want to know God. Is that true? If I come to Pastor Alpha's house, listen, there are certain rooms in that house I will never have access to until I get to a depth of relationship that qualifies me to enter there. Is that true? I may sit in the parlor there forever, but there are times that I may know him and we may want to discuss something very secret. How many of you have seen parents or loved ones or some of you when you want to discuss some serious issues you just out of five people you call only one and then the person enters and you even in the bedroom you sit at the side that the window is outside and you are discussing critical matters the secret things of the lord is with them that fear him it's not just being afraid priority Please let me drum it, brothers and sisters, that if you want to experience signs and wonders that will last, you must work on your relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't doubt that many of us are born again, but I don't see the priority of the kingdom. When you are intimate with God, it will show. You've not, you read your Bible Friday to Friday. You are not intimate with God. Don't say it does not matter. Prayer until you hear something on your zinc. Then you stand up. Play one koinonia message, altar of prayer. And back it up with one fearful tongues for 10 minutes. And lie down. You are not walking in faith. He spake a parable, Luke 18 verse 1. To the end that men ought always, always, always to pray. Listen, this year. I know the kind of people Satan is looking for. Lukewarm and careless Christians. To, to take like a prey. 
and destroy their lives. Take it from me. Do you know the Lord gave me a revelation during my retreat that surprised me. He said, son, there are many people I wanted to bless but that they, their prayer life cannot sustain the attack that will come on account of that level of blessing. So I help them by withholding it. Listen, this is true. That there are sat every dimension of glory comes with a dimension of attack. And much more than your gift, God looks at your spiritual life. If I give this guy 10 million naira and the spirits that eat up people comes, does he have the capacity to sustain it? It's not the issue of God give me, God give me. The Bible says God will never allow any temptation to be greater than us. And part of the way is withholding certain blessings. When God told me that thing, I started praying for myself first. I said, only God knows what dimension I would have entered. That God withheld because my spiritual life had not gotten to that level. Listen, if you are lukewarm, be sure of experiencing triumph and remaining there alone. But if it is signs and wonders, please upgrade your passion. Upgrade your zest for God. Not come to the house of God today, come two months later when there is problem. No, no. The first price. Are we blessed? Intimacy with God. Genuine intimacy. Create a routine of prayer. Create a routine of studying the word. Create a routine of worship. Those of you that God has blessed with televisions, turn them into preachers, not entertainment platforms. Am I, am I against watching films? You, you know my position. I'm, I don't, I'm not against it. You can watch your movie, whether Western or Nigerian or whatever, but let me tell you the truth. If you really want to press for signs and wonders, you better get a flash drive and put messages and worship songs. Slot it at the back of your TV. That sometimes you can be in your room or your house or wherever and let that sound of worship just arise. You are, you are creating a climate for God. This is the price for signs and wonders. Hallelujah. If in your group of friends, you are the most spiritual, it's a sign something is wrong with you. Because the day your spiritual life is down and you have no one to pick you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Listen, especially for those of us in ministry, this year, schedule a strong backup system. A strong backup system that while you preach and dispense the word of God, there must be a system, not just during retreat, not just during retreat, it must be a daily system that replenishes you. Otherwise, you may not make the journey in the level of strength that you want. Is God speaking to us? intimacy with God does intimacy with God pay my goodness <laughs> my goodness Acts chapter 4 verse 13 to 14 there are people who gave up their intimacy with God to look for money there are people who gave up their intimacy with God to look for power there are people who gave up their intimacy with God to look for fame no sir Anything his presence cannot give you is not available. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter, listen, and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. Because ignorant and unlearned people should not be commanding that kind of result. It says, and they took knowledge of them. What was their secret? That they had been with that's the secret to their boldness they said it's true we didn't have the opportunity to be educated we cannot brag on education but i have been with him listen when you truly are with him it will show in your life you don't have to say see me no there is an aura there is a fragrance that his presence carries may you carry that presence this year listen i can know in a second 
that a man is intimate with God. It's not by prayer. It's not by having a husky voice. There is a presence like a perfume. It's a signature of the secret place. I can hear you speak and I know that this is not your revelation. You just read something online and you are preaching. I can hear you speak and I know that mm -mm, this guy, you may even work miracles. But brothers and sisters, covet presence, covet presence, covet presence. Has nothing to do with being a preacher. Covet the presence of God. Consuming fire, sweet perfume. His awesome presence fills my life. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this place. You are transacting business, but there is such a presence. A man has been oppressed, cannot sleep in the night. But because you carry a heavy dimension of the presence that person will walk away and lie down and find out that that night he slept with no oppression you didn't pray you introduced an atmosphere covert presence as a man of god you don't carry presence you are not a preacher you are not a preacher a preacher is not just one who announces a preacher is one who brings his climate his atmosphere into a place Are we together? Please, let me tell you this. Take it from me. If you want God to use you, please, I can beg you, don't give up the presence of God for anything in your life. Don't give up the presence of God. Not for money, not for titles. Pray and say, Lord, grant me the grace to be addicted to your presence. Lift your voice and pray. One minute. Lord, I want to be addicted to your presence. Mm. It's where I find strength. It's where I find courage. <laughs> your presence. My place of refuge. My place of ideas. That's where I receive inspiration. That's where I experience the ministry of the comforter. In your presence. That's where I receive strength. That's where I receive strategies. Hallelujah. Some of the ideas you see by God's grace that we run this ministry with came in the secret place, the presence. Listen, let me teach you something about having time with God. Take this in mind. There are times learn to be alone. Some of us, our lives are too busy to know God learn to walk around in your room alone you know the way you are talking with somebody i do that a lot i'm just walking and talking lord you know the other day we we're talking about this thank you jesus i can be walking like that for hours i'm not necessarily praying like generating energy there are times for that but this is a love affair i'm talking with god thank you jesus and sometimes that mighty presence comes sometimes i cannot even stand it is the effulgence of that presence that we bring to the stage. There are many presenceless preachers, presenceless prayer coordinators, revelation hackers who pack revelation after revelation, couple it together and hope that it will give power. God is not a herbalist. Please look, seek his presence. Without God's presence, what do I have to offer you? Because you see, it's not everything you teach people that will be new. It is the presence that makes it fresh. Presence. You want signs and wonders in your life? Please make out time for God's presence. I want you to identify the things that represent distractions in your life and deal with them this year. They may not be bad, but they are weights. Some of us is noise making. 
noise making is what has evicted the presence of God in your life talkativeness choo, 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 choo. take that time to the secret place some of us need to coordinate our mornings properly some of us is careless time you are a young man you wake up 11 o'clock every day you won't know god my brother you have missed a rich pie of the day to know god many of us never practice personal vigils you can do church vigils and claim to a personal when you are alone with god ah. the excellency and the richness and the freshness of power that is gotten in his presence you are there spending time with god and god is winning battles for you you finish from that presence and come out and you meet testimonies lined up like an assembly testimony after testimony many of us don't know how to win battles when men insult you you have nowhere to run to create similitudes of altars not by building monuments but find exact locations. I've taught you the law of consistency. Don't meet with God just anywhere. You wouldn't know him that way. No. God is obsessed with location. Carve out a place that becomes your place with you and God. If you don't have access to a house or a room, why don't you find a location somewhere? Let's, let's be honest with ourselves and be serious and make this thing work this year seek his face and the effulgence of his glory will rub off on you and my brother my sister your life will be a compendium of signs and wonders number two the second key to commanding signs and wonders is faith 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 what is faith conviction plus obedience faith is not conviction alone that's believing faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of who God is and what his word has said you want to experience signs and wonders you must believe God this year John 11 verse 40 John 11 and verse 40 John 11 and verse 40 signs and wonders let's read it together one to read Jesus said unto her uh -huh, say it I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe thou should see the glory of God the glory of God are for those who believe God you must work on your conviction the foundation of Bible faith is understanding it is understanding that creates conviction you need faith to command signs and wonders you need to believe in God listen listen look at me many believers don't get miracles in their lives because we live in a society where cynicism sells where doubt sells is that true we are always thinking what if it's a lie what if it never happened what if this person were lying? You better come to a point this way where you believe that everything God says he would do, he will do. Is that true? So if we say God is going to bless Sam, come Sam. That God is going to bless you. It's up to you to choose to believe it. Or just say amen. And then go back after koinonia and talk as if you don't know Jesus Christ. Is that not what people do after service? They jump and shout and you see them praying. Then they start laughing at themselves when they are going back home. As if they were acting. Bros, I saw you praying. As if that prayer is acting. And then the person feels ashamed for being serious with the prayer. Why are we like this? We are in church. We hear the word and we believe it. We get back home and talk rubbish and nonsense, ungodly things. Did you hear that lady's testimony? The way I was looking at her eyes, I said she was lying. What is your business? If she was lying, release your faith and say, it. I can get the truth of that testimony. Instead of saying it cannot happen. I believe God to move this ministry to a new dimension. I believe God to move my life to a new dimension. 
the mockers will always bury their head while God keeps performing signs on those who believe the Bible says blessed is she that believes for unto her not unto them unto her this is a personal affair there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken I believe it I believe it that Lord if you are going to bless me if you want to lift up my life and change my story I stand with you believing like Abraham the devil will come in with his rubbish as usual and say look I hope you know that there are many people who are being owed salary and arrears how do you want to build a house this year and then a scripture fires out of you they got not the land in possession by their own hands neither did their sword save them are you hearing what I'm saying you look at yourself oh i'm 40 years will any man really like me and god says just wait and let me surprise you and god will bring a brother as if he was charm and just come and say sister let's go and see your parents say if you are playing don't play say, how can i be playing do i look like i'm playing let's let's go and see your parents and while the rest are laughing at you in three months you are settled and you keep watching their lives and they say ah this bad girl and God says never call unclean what I have called clean. while you are there talking nonsense God is lifting people hallelujah brothers and sisters there are people today you are paying their transport that they will be the one sponsoring people by the end of this year as young people I'm not talking of some visions in 10 years it is unto you in this kingdom not according to the preachers words according to your faith I believe God I believe God I believe you I believe you so you have an assignment to build your faith faith does not grow by itself please listen you don't grow just by sitting down you eat correct you eat you don't ask the food which part of my body are you going to don't worry your own is continue having access to the food and you'll see that you're growing that's how your faith grows listen let me tell you this is the year I want to encourage you avoid naysayers avoid faith killers you finish believing God and you finish three days dry over an issue and you come and meet a brother and he laughs hey, open that in it let's look at you you said you are stupid this is what you are fasting about and they kill your faith we have been taught that there are some things God cannot do. Just believe God and then when you perish, we can come and comfort you. But not before. Listen, I want you to enlarge your faith for big things this year. Don't just sit down and say, God, do this. No, Lord, I believe you. I believe you. Work on my faith. I'm ready to keep bringing you the word of God that will keep building your faith. There are so many things we are going to learn this year. But that God will grant us grace to believe it. Hold on, Mike. Listen. Please, I want you, those listening inside, outside, online, let us stop double-mindedness. In church, this is what I believe. We call it church mind. I don't know where that thing is, is in Bible. Then after you, you come out of church, we now have the secular, satanic, carnal, and ungodly mind that has never worked. Why change your convictions? It's better for me to know you don't even believe this aspect. It will help me to encourage you than to join those who, you are there, you don't believe it, but you are joining the group of people with convictions. You will find out that you will never get the result. Say, I receive grace to believe God. Say it again, I receive grace to believe God. And the key is to meditate on his word. You don't meditate on newspapers and cynical statements online. You don't meditate on gist. We were having a discussion when I went home to see my parents. Maybe let me just add it a little. And we're discussing um, the need for God to help ladies in saloons. Saloon is 
one place that is a wonderful place for making hair but it is uh is is a is a chamber that can program unbelief now please with all due respect to hairstylists i love you please may god bring members to your saloon but let me tell you this let me tell you this let me tell you this listen this is the first service it's too early to be laughing anyhow this is the i'm establishing the word there are many people hmm, who expose themselves to atmospheres that are antichrist that is the real devil you should cast not just the one around in your village that has left sins atmospheres have been creating room for satan must you visit the friends if you don't have anything godly and serious to discuss must you visit them you can send them a text how are you it's been a while just to check up on you god bless you there are people on their way to church someone just holds them back and then they don't come the person has robbed you of an opportunity to learn say i will work on my faith sam if i gave you a property will you take care of the property will you take care of the documents if you saw someone coming to carry the documents what will you do you will stop the person the bible says guard your heart we are guarding land we are guarding gold we are guarding atm look you you guard your atm by getting a card for it you now put it inside a bag and the bible says guard your heart and that's the one you leave it carelessly guard your heart with all diligence we have guarded atm we have guarded land that we came and met and we'll go and live we have guarded houses we have guarded the little tea and bread that are around and made noise we have guarded cars we built a garage for car and left your heart exposed you see the wisdom of that is of this earth that comes to naught. please say i will guard my heart guarding your heart doesn't mean to fight people but to mark people who have a track record of killing your faith they just see you rejoicing they say why the joy so the joy of the lord is my strength say I, i'm a christian too you better be real that thing looks like an emotional sociological statement but the name is is a faith killer statement hallelujah thank you sam number three the last key you want to command signs and wonders this year practice praise and thanksgiving mm. thanksgiving everybody say thanksgiving i am learning many strange things about this dimension of god that is humbling me with all humility these are revelations that god has revealed to me but i am learning in fresh ways the power of praise and the power of thanksgiving and the power of living a thankful life thanksgiving and living a thankful life are two different things thanksgiving is an event you can dance in church carry your handkerchief and not be thankful i have a special teaching on thanksgiving a little teaser to it thanksgiving your communication of thanks must match the blessing given the goal of thanksgiving is to imp to create an impression in in the giver that you understand the gravity of the sacrifice involved in giving that gift there are times that saying thank you is not thanksgiving it's too small for that kind of result if i give you 10 naira you say thank you i give you ten thousand, you say thank you i give you hundred thousand, you say thank you i give you one million you say thank you i give you 10 million you say thank you from 100 naira to 1 million you are ungrateful that thank you was only valid for 10 naira you were supposed to make the other givings weightier in your communication of thanks so many people just say god thanks i forgot to tell you the other day look at how you saved me and god said that's the is that the way you cried is that how you cried did you just cry casually you cried as if your life will finish and i opened you a door and look how casual you are please practice a life 
not a moment of thanksgiving fill a major portion of your prayer with thanksgiving lord i thank you are you not the one who has delivered me from my enemies there are many who would have prayed that i didn't see this year but lord in their presence you have honored me lord i thank you lord i thank you for the other day i was coming and a bike almost hit my car i thank you and god says you are doing this to me he said god i've not even finished wait he said what about your needs he said, i know you are faithful just allow me thank you and god says you don't need to ask again your thanksgiving has multiplied your result please learn to be thankful it is something that i have embraced thanksgiving complaining and murmuring all through scripture attracted the wrath of god not satan when people murmured before god it was a sign of ingratitude he punished them god you gave me bread wouldn't i have blue band there and god would say you are a wicked servant i didn't just give you tea i gave you bread just because there's no blue band you are shouting as if you are you are hungry say god will i continue to eat bread like that is it not you that said the part of the justice as a shining light and god says look at your ungrateful heart what happens if i give you a bakery it means you will leave me and say god <laughs> this was all what it was about now that i have a bakery it's enough to feed me live a thankful life don't thank god generally be specific count your blessing name them not 10 by 10 one by one lord you gave me five children no cs thank you now is it such a big thing lord thank you lord it was just day before yesterday i didn't have food to eat and today i even had to fetch two tears and give someone because a stranger i did not know just said you assign him somebody will tell you god sent me you won't turn back to the god and say thank you you told the messenger thank you and god that sent the person you left him like that till you have a need say god the other day how did i it escape my mind and god said what was there what was there that it escaped your mind thank him he gives you 10 naira say thank you make it a big deal god will say all these dances for 10 naira i said yes oh lord i'm dancing some of you are dancing not because you are truly grateful you are dancing because you have been taught it's a key to multiplication so you really hate God. It's just that you are just doing it. Oh God, where is my daily bread? Apostle say when you dance your way and you are done and God is saying, please stop dancing. Don't make me a fool. I'm not an idol. I'm not a cow somewhere that they lifted up. I am God all by myself. Let your gratitude be genuine. That you say, Lord, I know in this process there is a blessing. But whether or not there is a blessing, I thank you. Say, I will be thankful. Be thankful to God and be thankful to men. Some of us, we close the door of favor by ourselves because of ingratitude. Please take this issue of gratitude seriously. Jesus healed 10 people. He was passing and healed 10 people. He stayed there waiting to see who will come back. The 10 people were healed and they ran away. And one person said, mm -mm. We were supposed to die there unclean. But this one that God has done, this one will return. And he said, were there not ten of you? Where are the others? Take out time. If you can cry for problems, you should take out time to be lavish about thanksgiving. As a lifestyle, not just when it comes as an instruction here. Praise God and thank him. I live my own life saying thank you Jesus Lord I am grateful not because of what he has done Lord I am grateful thank you for the workers thank you for my life thank you for your word all through this year second Chronicles 20 verse 22 you can just write that as the scripture there they began to sing and to thank the Lord and to say for he is good and his mercy endureth forever and God began to set ambushment we have emphasized this that praise is powerful but it must be from the heart that's what makes it perfected praise ordained praise there is praise that is anointed it's called perfected praise 
there is praise that is rubbish it's just it's just selfishness in one minute while you are seated can you tell god thank you let's just take a minute or two to say thank you thank you jesus some of you enter 2000 you enter 2018 grumbling someone died december 31st but you enter 2018 grumbling as if the power is your own abba let's be grateful some of you you have been grateful but not enough to match the goodness of god in your life don't act as if it's a right thank you jesus learn gratitude to god and to men be lavish about gratitude take note of things that people do for you that you cannot do for yourself be very meticulous about it say i'm not that kind of person learn it you will close all kinds of doors being ungrateful you can earn a living through gratitude you can literally live off gratitude gratitude is a stream of income thank you jesus go ahead lord you gave me a relationship and work out thank him at least he gave you one at least a guy was able to come into your life lord i thank you i have not built the house yet but you gave me land i thank you lord i've not graduated yet but at least i'm still a student thank you we live in a society of gross ingratitude just take a minute and say thank you how about some of you who have seen the anointing in your life in unusual ways two years ago you were not like this but look what god has done in your life mighty dimensions of revelation mighty dimensions of the anointing now they invite you everywhere to be a blessing men have discerned the hand of god upon your life it's a reason to say thank you don't just say i'm a man of god don't just say I'm a woman of God. Don't just say I'm a prayer warrior. How about people that God changed their financial status? No connection, no Godfather, no Godmother. I'm showing you why many of us do not see the signs of God in our lives. When you thank God, it looks like it's a burden to you. Jesus, thank you. How many graduates thank God? They complain about no job. They run their mouth from morning till night. Oh God, won't you give me a job? Have you ever carried your certificate to put it on the ground and roll over it and say, Lord, thank you. Oh, I wrote jam 10 times. It's, it's, a, it's a dream today that without any sponsor, I may graduate. We live in a generation that complains. Lord, I have a church of only 30 members. But you have people who have discerned your grace and they are listening to you. Lord, I don't have a job. Won't you change my story? You've not got a job for one year and you've not begged. Who has been the supplier of that? There are workers who have been on strike. There are workers whose salaries have not been paid for six months. In other states, some one year. Yet God has sustained them. And they don't have any other extra stream of income. It's been the Lord's doing. Make sure it is marvelous in your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. These three keys are the keys that God gave me. That if we will focus on being intimate with Him and believe Him enough to release our faith, and to back it up with a life that is full of praise and thanksgiving then brothers and sisters you are ready to see the outstretched arm of god his strange wonders in the midst of people there are battles this year that you will not need to fight mm -mm. this is i believe with all my heart that this is one of those years that the lord will say uh -uh. this battle is not your own allow me the egyptians you see today they are greater than you you have already done your own battle by worshiping me leave me to fight them that god will take you out of the battlefront and stand there 
and ask the enemy that has oppressed your family face me now you they may not have the strength in themselves let me give you 11 instructions for this year and then we'll round up please write down these instructions and believe them you don't have anything to write type it in your phone men prosper in the kingdom on the strength of instructions he says my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from you keep them in the midst of your heart then he says they are life to those who find them men rise in this kingdom through instructions transgressors are violators of instructions number one very quickly in this year 2018 make up your mind to love and seek the Lord passionately instruction number one love and seek the Lord passionately I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God prioritize God in your life this year prioritize God some of you I congratulate you at least you are better than the way you used to be but you need to do more you need to move closer to God pray for me oh as you are going to church no love and seek the Lord passionately number two serve the Lord this year wholeheartedly serve the Lord wholeheartedly you are a worker in this ministry this is the time for you to pour your heart doesn't matter what department you are not a worker in this ministry find a department and commit yourself commit yourself serve the Lord Exodus 23 verse 25 Exodus 23 I'm just running the instructions but I just felt like giving you a scripture of this it says if they obey and serve me if you shall obey and serve the Lord your God he shall do what bless thy bread and ye shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water and I will take sickness away from the midst of you when you read 26 let's read 26 he says that there shall nothing cast a young nor be barren in the land the number of your days I will fulfill serve God wholeheartedly genuinely genuinely coming to church is not serving God walking in the house of God is serving God number three be passionate and intentional about bringing men to Jesus be passionate and intentional about bringing men to Jesus Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 be passionate and intentional about bringing men to Jesus read it with me one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament uh-huh and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore brothers and sisters your heart must be passionate about bringing people to Jesus bringing people to Jesus is more than just winning souls you are going to church you don't go alone are we together there's someone in your neighborhood after evangelizing to him another person will come while you are talking say somebody has come say it doesn't matter i can continue from where he stopped let your life bring somebody to jesus someone sits down and he tells you i look at the way my life is i say well uh, there's prayer meeting going on on tuesday once in a while you can go no that's not evangelism that's suggestion evangelism is my brother Jesus Christ is able to help you look at what he made out of my life and you talk to the person 
and at the end of it you ask the person do you mind that I pray and lead you to Jesus Christ some of you as I'm saying it you are even shocked because you have not said this thing in years it's not part of your dictionary a profitable believer is one who brings harvest of souls and establishment of the same leave people and drag yourself you are coming for miracle service you are coming alone your entire loved ones are languishing in in trouble be be a true evangelist do the work of an evangelist you know a woman around your neighborhood she has been buried madam please i don't have transport no problem i will pay your transport that's evangelism hallelujah let's be serious about leading men to jesus can i tell you the truth all that we do in this life will end one day i hear what i'm saying anybody that leaves this earth without nobody goes to hell for sinning everybody goes to hell for rejecting jesus that is what takes people to hell it is not sin that takes people to hell it is they are rejecting jesus the propitiation the substitute so don't sit down some of us our wives are not saved our husbands are not saved this is the year to vet everyone's salvation start with your household don't sit down and say it doesn't matter when i hear that someone has gone to be with the lord the first thing i ask is did he die in christ if he died in christ i just say ah then the only thing we are going to miss is just the physical fellowship but brothers and sisters let me be sincere with you if you die without christ you will never 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 be connected to jesus again as far as the bible reveals to us it matters that we make sure people we give people business deals wonderful we give them jobs i want you to preach use everything use your looks to preach hello use your credit to preach use your life don't say me i'm not a woman of god i will keep sowing in koinonia please the urgency the church of the lord jesus christ is gradually fading in the area of conscious evangelism i know we make altar calls in church but that personal life we pray for people we intercede for people but we watch people they are not born again we don't care we call it being friendly start with those under your roof especially for those of us who have any form of influence nobody should be under my roof and not serve my god no sir don't say we don't want to offend anybody it doesn't mean you just meet somebody especially a non-christian and start harassing them no you can start by showing them the love of god it doesn't have to be one day preaching intercede for your loved ones many people drop prayer requests here car house wife husband they never write the names of souls and say father by next miracle service let this my father meet jesus number four remain joyful and thankful fourth instruction quickly we have 11 of them remain joyful and thankful this is the year that you should never allow anything kill your joy not bad report not anything make up your mind to be joyful regardless of what happens remain joyful don't allow your joy to be perturbed by circumstances remain unbending in your joy get up in the morning you sing praises unto god lord i love you while you are doing that immediately you get an alert the interview went and were sorry to announce to you that you didn't get the job lord is all right i know that this is painful but i thank you the admission list first list came out i even saw in my dream that i got admission now physically there's no admission and then you are you cry because you are a human being jesus wept but in the midst of the cry find a song of merriment 
number number what be strong in faith fifth instruction be strong in faith reject fear reject fear write it be strong in faith dash reject fear the fear of evil report the fear of death the fear of not having a man to marry you the fear of not having a woman to marry you hello it's amazing how people walk with all these kinds of fear brothers the fear of not being established reject it sisters the fear of marrying a poor man or some of these nonsense fears that lead people to do demonic things reject it the fear of your church remaining at the same level the fear of being destroyed the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime in subject i know that all around the nation and around africa there are all kinds of upheavals happening reject fear reject fear reject fear for god has not given me and you the spirit of fear but he has given us the spirit of love of power and of a sound mind please reject fear be strong in faith number six this year 2018 be visionary and focused get serious with your life it's an instruction write it down be visionary and focused for god's sake get serious with your life let this be the year that children become adults let this be the year that naive people grow up in their minds brothers let this be the year that childishness is replaced with a life of diligence and discipline and maturity my bible says when i was a child i thought like a child many of us have, are still calling ourselves children give yourself an orientation this year i will no longer behave like a child brothers sisters everybody behave is that true especially for those trusting god to settle down this year your life must show you are ready hello hold on mike your life must show you are what ready don't call into your life blessings you have not been equipped to receive and maintain don't call into your life blessings you are not ready to equip and maintain sister if you are saying 2018 is my year of marital settlement please do the needful be disciplined jumping around comes to an end hopping around people's houses to gossip comes to an end why you are preparing to be a good wife don't see a child fall and you walk and you are trying to cut walk no you are acting like a girlfriend you act like a wife correct don't worry we have a series oh i mean you are in for a buffet this year praise the lord and our brothers too balance 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 i love god but i'm suffering balance this is the year we will access wisdom from the throne to do well in all things balance praying in tongues and you are not doing anything about taking care of your family there are many brothers that are not ready to settle down being old in age is not the requirement for settling down it is the ability to understand the cost implication of life hallelujah so you have to be visionary and focused go and get a notebook there are some of us get more than a notebook get a room get a room get out of your friend's room and find your room trust god for grace release your faith gather some money and get a room of your own where will i get mattress start with a bed sheet on the ground learn the honor of diligence all this waiting for a job to bail you out is the thing that sponsors carelessness the power of god is released when you get out get out there are young people that should pack out of their parents house this year and there are parents that should call the young people and say look 
um, I had the message apostle preached and I love you with all my heart. I love you too much to leave you in this house. Go. Ah, Daddy, what if I die? Go and die there. Go. I'm, I'm, jo I'm, I'm serious. I'm not joking. Then certain levels of decorum will come. Then once it is seven, you will go back home. You are learning to be a good father. It's because there is a friend whose room you are staying and they are cooking for you. That's why you can return back home 11 o'clock with no reason. You are, that is already an atmosphere for unfaithfulness. You have a room, you learn maintenance, you can lock your room. The day you forget and they steal your rechargeable, you have learned. You have learned responsibility through the things you have suffered. And that is a good lesson because now it will help you to be serious. There are too many children old children believing that just because age is going they are wise we have to sit down say i will be focused in the name of jesus so be visionary be focused you are a pastor settle down what has god called me to do not i'm an apostle today i'm an evangelist tomorrow i think briefly prophetic came on me what what are you to the body settle down you are a businessman. What do you do? I do everything. No, sir. You will fail. Be focused. Be focused. Get a clear direction for your life. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. You can't do everything. Ladies, calm down. Settle down. This is the direction my life is taking. Oh, I'm going to be serious. Oh, this is what I'm going to do with my life. I'm a graduate now. I've not, am I working or am I doing business? Or am I doing both? Okay, what am I doing? I need to be focused. I need to buy a book and be serious. Oh, I notice that every time money comes, I waste it with friends. We don't drink, we don't smoke, but we waste money. It's still sin. Are we together? Right now, when money comes, I notice I'm a worker in Koinonia. Instead of wasting money, let me buy one suit. And now start looking like a gentleman. The day your glory comes, you don't have the attire for it. Number seven. In this year 2018, spend time building your spirit man and your mind. Spend time. Invest. In fact, that's really the word. Invest time building your spirit man and your mind buy clothes look good but brothers and sisters only buy clothes and look good when your spirit is alive and your mind is alive packaging without content should live your life this year all this spending hilarious money to buy things and prove things that are not in your spirit and not in your mind make sure that a life a fake life leaves you this year build your spirit as a woman, build your spirit man. As a man, build your spirit man. Through prayers, the study of the word, and relevant materials. Let me tell you where many of us have stopped. Prayers and Bible. Bible is not the word. It contains the word. There are other materials that contain the word explained to be relevant to your future just carry bible and read any part of it and think you are growing no you need books that explain things to you get books get videos some of you may need to budget for a laptop this year you don't have a television yet budget for a laptop you can sell two or three of your shoes and buy a laptop shoes that don't bring anything let's let's be serious invest in your spirit let me tell you what will happen many people who are used to packaging will laugh at you but i guarantee you your spirit and your mind like power twins will return everything you are paying for now a thousand times number what number eight pay attention to your health and your physical well-being please write it down when God gave me this word, I repented a thousand times before God, before even jotting it down. Pay attention to your health and your physical well-being. You can't pay attention to your spirit. 
pay attention to your mind and the body that will keep them here you are careless with it that means you are ready to exit so pay attention to your health paying attention to your health is not buying hilariously expensive creams that are beyond your power now that's not paying attention to your health you can start at whatever level you have you are now instead of buying all kinds of things you can buy fruits natural things correct yes instead of taking five coca-cola in a day buy carrots buy apple watermelon meet the welfare after the service for any information that can help you on your health let's let's walk as if we want to live long exercise truly speaking exercise god challenged me on these things and i will tell you as he did for me exercise take advantage of your life your health work on it believers are careless with their health we allow all kinds of sicknesses come you are feeling sharp pains around your body i'm a man of faith but what is wrong with looking at someone and say oh there's a sharp pain no just to verify okay this and that oh we notice wow um we found out that there's something there. okay so this is what the enemy wants to put in my body let's work together but many believers will go on and be talking things that can be managed at infancy now later gets to a complicated case and they deny men of god sleep with disturbance because of something that wisdom could manage please take your health seriously you know when you are sick god gave us brains you know your body before and during sickness something is wrong deal with it take care of your body take care of your health number number nine press for financial freedom press for financial freedom pay attention to the details that will empower you i beg you in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god do not allow anybody trivialize to your life the relevance of being financially free if it is god you want to serve you want to have time for god your family and your destiny press for financial freedom we have a lot of teachings on that wise that will come this year there already are teachings get financial dominion get the wealthy place other auxiliary teachings success systems the gift of men activating seasons of favor activating seasons of breakthrough settle down with it i understand the media is working on a dedicated web page to arrange some of the sermons topically so that it's easy they make it easy if you are looking for topics on finances there are all the messages there so you can download them believers poverty will distract us from living a fruitful life i repeat poverty will distract us lack will distract us living from hand to mouth will never allow us grow spiritually and live a life of health and soundness depression is eating up christians tongue-talking christians because they have to worry about where tea and bread will come from by the grace of god god has empowered us as leaders in this ministry with enough intelligence to be able to contribute and bring supply i am a balanced man of god i don't believe in people getting anointed and healing the sick and remaining poor why choose when everything is, the, is in the same table it is the life of god please and please especially our dear brothers let us trust god to press towards financial freedom don't say i'm too young don't say god will make a way just like a callous irresponsible statement let's settle down and trust god to work our salvation financially speaking in fear and trembling you don't work out your finances by hustling this is the year when hustlers will pay for it doing everything in the strength of the flesh no thou shalt hear a voice from behind 
the secret to financial prosperity is not business i've told you the secret to financial prosperity is not a job the secret to financial prosperity is understanding understanding that is the first thing you seek understanding first getting a job and doing business is giving your understanding a physical expression to now deliver the results there are many people doing business getting jobs with no understanding we live in an economy that many of us do not understand god's financial system and we are paying for it dearly please press for financial freedom this year start with the teachings listen to them again and again the work has been done for many of us if you pay attention to koinonia's teachings on finances if that's the only thing you study alone i guarantee you you'll be successful number 10 walk in love and be at peace with all men walk in love and be at peace with all men brothers and sisters this is the year when all black books must be torn into pieces say amen, amen. the the books that we have allowed the devil to give us all this compendium of enemies all this attitude of cynicism love and peace is therapeutic this should be the year for intentional reconciliation it will be costly to spend your life and your time being at loggerheads with people be having love and peace will require you learning how to speak to men with honor there are many auxiliary additions to it it does not mean that you just live in love and peace there are some of us your current mindset does not have provision for peace because the way you communicate is pungent and destructive we must learn to culture our words through understanding it is part of the press for living a life walking in love and peace with all men don't look down on anybody don't criticize anybody and say your father is this you people are poor you people are rich you are this tribe you are that tribe uh -uh. i am your senior in secondary school you are my junior in have mutual respect one for another don't be the one receiving all the respect and having people bowing to you and you're not reciprocating living in love and peace will require you learning people's skills understanding the psychological composition of living with people don't run somebody down and tear somebody down and think it does not matter you look at a lady and insult her lambasta from head to toe and then expect that she would not be at loggerheads jealousy what of gossiping hopping from place to place to talk about people bringing into your discussion matters of people that are not your concern all these things must be well edited this year so that we can live in love and peace and then mark people mark their areas of vulnerability and create a system to relate with them without being harmed by their vulnerability there are people who will never stop gossiping so you learn when best to see them greet them in church don't go to their house because it's obvious that going to their house is going to create a platform for gossiping let the meeting place be church and church alone are we together finally love the body of christ the last instruction i will give you for this year genuinely love the body of christ never criticize never castigate any man of god never castigate any ministry don't join bloggers to tear down men of god doesn't mean that men of god and ministries are perfect we all are not perfect but then you cannot sow that seed of being the one to be destroying a man's destiny and a man's church a man's ministry whether it was your former church your present church your former pastor your present pastor koinonia any church a church in nigeria a church in diaspora it doesn't matter where always see the light in the church in spite of the weakness of the body christ is still in the midst of her let this be the year there is a sin that many believers are committing it's called the sin of fighting against the body if nobody has told you it's sin i want you to know that it is sin 
fighting the body of Christ through ill-spoken words, fighting a man's church, fighting a man's whatever, getting down intentionally to destroy the work of God because of poor and pungent communications is sin. And it's a very strange kind of sin because it brings almost instant consequences. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. And for this cause, many do sleep. What is their sin? Not discerning the body. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, God has announced to us that this is a year of signs and wonders. I believe it. And I know that you believe it. And we are going to pray and speak this into our lives. There are many developments that have happened in the ministry. I'm going to be announcing them shortly. But then I want us to rise up on our feet now. And we are going to pray this prophetic word into our lives. You have heard the word. You have heard the instructions that have come from the word. I want you to open your notebook. I'm going to give you five minutes. Open your notebook and pray these 11 instructions into your life. Forget about the signs and wonders. It will be the result of this. Open the notebooks one by one and look at it and cry to the God of heaven. Go ahead and pray. Pray it. Pray it into your life. Pray it into your life. Don't be silent, brothers and sisters. Pray it into your life. I receive grace to love and seek the Lord. Shabakato Pakarato Sadabaliakata. Intimacy. Intimacy with God. Intimacy with God. I receive grace for intimacy. In the name of Jesus Christ. I obey and I serve Him. I obey and I serve Him. I obey and I serve Him. Pray those 11 things into your heart. Be childlike enough and pray them. And watch the God of heaven arise for you. You have five minutes, prophesy them into your life. Lord, I obtain the grace. I obtain the grace. I obtain the grace. I am intentional about bringing men to Jesus. I am intentional about bringing men to Jesus. I decree and declare that this year I am visionary. I am focused. I am visionary. I am focused. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I spend time building my spirit man. Go ahead and pray. I spend time building my mind. I pay attention to my health. I pay attention to my physical well-being. I shall not die. I live long. And I do the things that make for long life. In the name of Jesus, I pay attention to my health. I press for financial freedom. I reject poverty. I reject lack. I reject financial weakness. In the name of Jesus, God has made all grace abound to me. So that I, having all sufficiency in all things, that I am bound unto all good works. In the name of Jesus, I decree. The Bible says, declare that he might be justified. Declare it in prayer. I walk in love. I'm at peace with all men. No enmity. No jealousy. No backbiting. No tearing down another. In the name of Jesus. This is the year when my life will lift everyone up. This is the year when my words will lift everyone up. No destroying the destinies of men. I love the body of Christ in the name of Jesus I love the body of Christ I am part of the body of Christ I honor the body of Christ hallelujah 
I like you to declare and say, Father, no battle this year will bring me down to the ground. Lift your voice and declare. Victorious all through from January till December. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My life becomes a sign and a wonder. No weapon fashioned against me will prosper. No tongue rising up against me will succeed. When men say there is a casting down, my declaration is that there is a lifting up. There is a casting down, my declaration is that there is a lifting up. Pray. Pray. No defeat, no defeat, victorious by the blood of Jesus. No defeat, no defeat, no defeat, no defeat. My year of signs and wonders, no defeat in any area of life. In the name of Jesus, no defeat. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points very quickly. Hallelujah. I like us as a family to pray for one sign to start up the year. Lord, strange favor. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, let that be the sign. We agree with you, oh God, as a ministry. Give us the sign. The first sign for the year. Undeniable favor. Favor with men. Favor with systems. Favor with institutions. Favor with governmental personalities. Let favor bring us revelations from the realm of the spirit. Let favor bring us strange dimensions of influence. Let it be a sign and a token, oh God, that will follow every one Koinonia member all through this year. We declare favor. We prophesy favor. We release favor. We declare favor. We prophesy favor. We release favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. That the God of suddenlies that arises overnight listen i want us to pray for a quick walk not just favor lord arise a quick walk in the lives of people lift your voice and pray god of suddenlies god of suddenlies he says suddenly there was a sound suddenly an emergence suddenly a job suddenly an admission sudden marriage sudden children sudden lifting sudden anointing lord compress time compress time give your people speed we invoke you the god of suddenness arise oh god in this year of signs and wonders let it not be according to time let it be according to your power let it not be according to time let it be according to your power Come on, invoke the God of the suddenness. Arise for me, O God. My helper, Ebenezer, arise. Wipe the tears of those that cry. Silence the lips of mockers. Suddenly, let the lifting come. It's called a year of signs and wonders. Lord, defy the laws of nature. Defy the laws of nature. Arise for people. Change their levels spiritually. Change their levels financially. Don't be tired. We are praying. Restore honor to your people. Restore glory to your people. Oh God, I cry to you. 
Harais. Listen, we are rounding up. Look at me. There is the natural progression of life. Are we together? But Bible says a mystery can happen when the sower and the reaper, as you are sowing, you are receiving harvest. That time can actually be removed in an equation. It's not ungodly. God leaves time to teach us wisdom. But when we have gotten the wisdom, he can take away the time equation and say, look, I'm giving you speed. There are things in people's lives that if it is according to time, they may never do much. Is that true? Time. A woman who has been barren for eight years does not need one one child. When God gives her triplets once, he has given her eight years. This is speed. Are we together? There are people who graduated 20 years ago. They have not gotten a job. If you get a job of 40,000, please tell me, in how many years will you buy cement? You need speed. Brothers and sisters, there is a name God is called. He's called the God of the suddenness. I don't know if you believe this thing. Oh, that a man can sleep in the prison and by the next day be a prime minister. That a nation can be dying of recession and by the next day, food goes almost for nothing. Is that true? That apostles can be timidly hiding in the upper room and by the next day they are filled with power moving have you not heard that a nation can give birth in one day a woman birth is supposed to be nine months but god said i can do something that will make a nation give birth in one day we are still going to pray this prayer and say lord bring speed to my life be the god of the suddenness settle the issues in my life so that i can have time to serve you pray Settle my life, oh God. Maritally, settle my life, oh God. Financially, settle my life, oh God. I want to have the time to serve you. Lord, let the promotion come speedily. Let the spiritual dimension come speedily. Lord, let the gift be at work in my life speedily. Let that level of anointing come to my life speedily. hallelujah hallelujah just give me a few seconds i want you to make an announcement to principalities and powers that this is not the year for dragging it's a year when you match things and move look the bible says the hand of the lord came upon elijah elijah did not meet any obstacle on the way listen i like you to release your faith with someone near you and challenge every devil that has been programmed to obstruct your work. Satan has a mysterious way of keeping people at a position. Challenge every power. Challenge every devil. Lord, I declare no obstacle on my way. God of Jeshurun, arise. Go before me like a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire consuming everything that is not of god yokes from darkness the scorching tongues of men divinations 
manipulations in the dark world I decree and declare the God that is as a pillar of fire is against you is against you my God is a consuming fire my God is a consuming fire burn everything that stands to delay your purposes in my life go ahead and pray this is for your glory oh God everything it has never happened in my family I'm the first to do it in this year my life will be a sign and a wonder for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. God knows the reason why he made a miracle service immediately after the next, the, after the first service next week is miracle service and i believe god did it intentionally because i'm trusting god that we will receive something by next week truly speaking that will project people in it's not all about just deliverance this is impartation there is something you need to receive for the journey that you will run like elijah and no devil will be able to stand you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it's not enough for us to see miracles and to see the manifestations of the Spirit. If you build your life and your faith upon just miracles and the manifestations of God, as good as that is, they are signs. Hallelujah. And our faith must be built on a sure foundation. The Bible says, He that hears my words and doeth them is compared to he that builds his house on a rock dig deep and builds his house on a rock the bible says the wind came and all kinds of things came but he was unshakable but the one that built his house on sand and let me tell you something the body of christ has many sands in which believers are building their faith upon and our goal is that every one of us comes to a point where we are established in christ that we know him paul said but i know whom i have believed and i'm persuaded that he is able that's what it means to be a strong christian to be a strong christian does not just mean one who has the ability to pray four or five hours wonderful it's not just one who has the ability to fast for 100 days wonderful not just one who has the ability to quote scriptures or be in ministry or walk in the miraculous these things are good elements of spiritual growth but there is a level of steadfastness establishment where you are grounded in the truth hallelujah where you know the lord the bible says let the rich man not glory in his riches let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength but let him that glory had glory in this that he knoweth and understandeth me this is the pride of the believer that you know the lord beyond religion beyond quoting scriptures hallelujah the church has been weak and beggarly primarily because the ministers have not been able to bring the church to a place of strength and maturity where every believer knows God and has a testimony and a track record of a personal work with God beyond the boundaries of ministry. Your knowledge of God should not be just the God of Joshua Selman or the God of Koinonia. There is a name that must come out of your experience with God. Hallelujah. The saints of old, 
encounter God in practical ways and they name God after the residue of their experience with him. And while it is good to know him as the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, God of all the men of God in this country, it's time you develop an experience of being established in the person and the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Because when you know him, you will experience the fullness of him. And this has been my passion for years. To bring believers to a point where we know the Lord. Hallelujah. For they that know their God, Daniel 11, 32b, they shall be strong and they are the ones who will do exploits. Not the Christians. They that know their God. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego say, Oh king, we will not be careful to speak to you in this matter. He said, our God will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, I will not bow to you. That's a revelation of God. The reason why the spirituality of many people and of the church in Nigeria is very slippery and very basic is because we have not contended for a greater knowledge of God. The knowledge of his ways, his principles, his character and his person. And this becomes our only hope for a victorious life. Hallelujah. I hope you have a passion to know God. To know him. Beyond the things that he can give you. Beyond marriage, beyond money, beyond friends, beyond a good CGPA. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Revelations 18 how that the kings of the earth had in, intermingled with Babylon. And there was a call in verse 5. 4. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. That means God is calling a kind of people. Come out of her. My people. It says, That be, ye be not partakers of her sins. Hallelujah. Let me show you something very interesting. Tonight I want to challenge your second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 3. Paul is speaking here. Tonight I'm speaking on the apostate church. The apostate church. We're examining the concept of apostasy. In the body of Christ apostasy talks of a deviation from the truth it talks of the error of shifting and drifting away from the original principles of God and it will shock you as I reveal some things to you that happen in the body of Christ it is so important bless God for being alive to listen to this message tonight hallelujah Paul speaks about a generation and a time in a church age where there will be a reign there will be a prevalent manifestation of what he calls apostasy read on second timothy he was charging his son in the gospel timothy that he be established in truth and be a faithful bishop over the churches around verse one this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come this is a portrait of the apostate church for men shall be lovers of their own selves i want to paint the picture of the nigerian church for you and help me confirm whether or not i'm lying covetous boasters proud blasphemous disobedient to parents unthankful unholy verse 3 without natural affection gay marriage all kinds of madness that goes on. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, going to church, wearing nice suits 
having ushers and protocols standing having a form having bibles in their homes having ipads and ipods and all kinds of things browsing through scripture having a form of godliness say but denying its power from such turn away verse 6 for of this sort there are those who creep into houses house prophets marching from house to house telling every house the problem they have in the world and leading captive silly women laden with sins led away with various lusts ever learning bible studies on sunday prayer meeting in the night self fellowship on monday miracle service on tuesday deliverance service on wednesday word exposition and encounter on thursday standing on the rock on friday sitting in heavenly places on saturday ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth Now as Janice and Jembers withstood Moses, so this also resist the truth. Amazing that in the church of God, the truth is resisted. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further. This is the judgment of God upon these ones. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men, and theirs also was. He said, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. This is Paul speaking. My manner of life. My purpose. My faith. My long suffering. My charity. My patience. Hallelujah. 11. Persecutions. Afflictions which came unto me in Antioch. And all of that. Verse 12. Yea. And all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. And then 13. But evil men and seducers shall become worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Let's read that verse together. Verse 13. Want to read. But evil men and seducers shall become what? Worse and worse, deceiving people and they themselves being deceived. But this is the encouragement to the true church. 14. But continue thou. In the things which thou hast learned and thou hast been assured of, knowing whom thou hast learned them. 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 16. He said, For all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Number one, for doctrine. Number two, for reproof. Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God, the next verse, may be what? Perfect. The word perfect there is mature, thoroughly furnished. The purpose of scripture and the dealings of God with the saints is that he brings us to a point where we are mature. Established. Grounded. Built up. In the knowledge of God. The apostate church is that church that subtly begins to deviate from the doctrines and the principles of Christ. The Bible says, ask for the ancient parts and walk ye therein. Unfortunately, what we call the ancient part is not what God calls the ancient part. Because what we call the ancient part is the traditions and religiosity of men and of denominations. That also is an error and is part of the trait of the apostate church. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me tonight? If you came here to be blessed, if you came here to know the Lord, if you came here to shake out the things that caused the great to fall, then welcome to this message tonight. You must be able to open your spirit to receive. 
for in receiving the word it will cause you to be established in truth hallelujah there are all kinds of apostasy in our church every kind of activity the bible makes us to understand the the next series that we're stepping into we will be examining the book of revelations hallelujah we're going to be opening up the book of revelations the word revelation comes from a latin word revelatio and the greek is apocalypsis that means the unveiling of that which has been previously hidden hallelujah it was a revelation of christ jesus as revealed to john a little bible history about john the bible makes us to understand that persecution arose when certain roman emperors began to strike against the church of christ and the first of them in bible history is called emperor nero he was a wicked and a hostile man hallelujah came to a point where they persecuted the church to a point that there was a field like a football field and they would parade believers and lose lions to chase them on account of their faith for the kingdom many were thrown into the den of lions many were dragged in carts hallelujah it was during that time that paul and peter paul was about to be crucified and bible history tells us that paul was about to be crucified the exact same way jesus was crucified and paul said he was not worthy he said they should turn him upside down and they turned him upside down and crucified him hallelujah and then after emperor nero one called domitio the next emperor he came in and paraded himself to be god and to be lord to a point that he even banished his wife and persecuted his children he wanted everybody to call him lord and god so when john the beloved the one who jesus loved when he began to preach about christ in the city of ephesus he began to talk about the counsel of god talk about the mysteries of the kingdom the divine life and the reality of the lordship of christ it was a real threat to the emperor hallelujah and then they caught john and paraded the people and they boiled hot oil and they threw john in it suddenly john entered the hot oil and nothing happened to him he moved freely through that hot oil and they were amazed what manner what dimension of the spirit what knowledge of god did this man have and as a result of that he was banished to the island that we call patmos revelations chapter one help us oh god to be the true church the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must surely come to pass and he had sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant john who bore witness of the word of god and of the testimony of jesus christ and all things that he saw and there is a blessing there for all those who read and obey the things that are written in revelations and john wrote to the seven churches i'm driving somewhere hallelujah now you must understand that the way the book of revelation was was um was broken it told him right the things that were the things that are and the things that shall happen after hallelujah the things that were was a revelation of all the things that had happened before the church age the things that are is a sum total of what we call the dispensation of the church age encapsulated prophetically in the seven letters that were written to the churches there were truly seven churches in asia minor all of the churches smyrna laodicea and all of pagamos all of those churches they were real churches that were planted by the apostles in asia but then prophetically every one of those churches was a representation and a type a dispensation of different ages in the church age are you following me now and so he began to write to the churches and you would hear the lord commend 
the churches i commend you over this and that and that however i have a problem hallelujah god had a burden because the church of christ although they were walking in grace although they were walking in power certain men began to come in orchestrated by satan himself and if they began to be injected into the system they talked like apostles moved like prophets prophesied like great men but paul said that these ones do not belong to us because their gospel and their message began to deviate the body of christ are you following me now this is one of the traits there are many doctrines hear me that many circles and ministries in this country are imbibing they teach it they write books about it these are erroneous doctrines that were sent from the pit of hell to deviate the focus of the church from the primary truth that it runs upon are you listening to me one of those doctrines was addressed to the first church in Revelation chapter 2 and Paul called it the doctrine of the Laodiceans the Laodiceans were a kind and a group of people that introduced a kind of doctrine another was called the doctrine of Balaam different kinds of doctrines and let me tell you something the church of Christ needs rapid emergency attention otherwise the way we are going to the church of Christ has now become a psychological hospital where the power and the grace of God has been replaced by therapeutic psychological things so a brother can sleep with a lady and they say we need to examine the mental state and the kind of drugs and the the psychosomatic condition and all of the medical terms the apostate church we find justification for everything in the body one of the doctrines of the laodicean is where today we get the doctrine of what we know to be the doctrine of eternal salvation that once you are born again you can sleep in the name of jesus cheat in the name of jesus bribe in the name of jesus that whatever happens to your body does not affect your spirit your spirit is saved and many saints jump and we say hallelujah and many are queuing up and they will receive a rude shock when they find themselves in hell are you listening to me different kinds of gospels came one of it is called the doctrine of balaam there's no time but do you know balaam balaam was a prophet balaam was a true prophet balak called him and said he should curse the nation of israel and he repeatedly wanted to make attempts but the lord stopped him you know why because the nation of israel were a sanctified and a holy people and the shout of the king was in the midst of them and he had a strategy in the book of numbers the bible begins to reveal to us some of the things that he did he caused the nation of israel to begin to fornicate and sleep with other people are you getting blessed tonight i came to challenge you tonight and then for the men of god in this country we have a special let me show you something Jeremiah 23 I wish every pastor prophet bishop pope brother whatever that names the name of Christ will sit and read this scripture are you ready let's read verse 1 then we'll jump to verse 9 Jeremiah 23 verse 9 verse 1 and then we'll go to verse 9 are you there want to read woe be unto who stop who is speaking 
God is speaking through the prophet. He said, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of the pasture. Woe unto the pastors. That means there are pastors. There are men and women of God. They own parishes. They own churches. You watch them on TV. It says they destroy and they scatter the sheep. Verse 9. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. Now you must understand when the Bible talks of prophets, in ancient time there were no apostles. Are you listening to me? Why? Because Christ has not been risen. One of the biblical proof of an apostle is that he must encounter Jesus Christ face to face. So the apostolic ministry was also incorporated. And so the prophets functioned both in the apostolic and the prophetic office. They were the only ones who God could use to communicate his counsel to the people. The priests barely mediated between the God and the people in terms of sacrifice. So when he talks about prophets there, don't smile and say I was sleeping and I saw evangelists under my name. You belong to that category and it's important to listen. He said, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom with wine had overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. This is the prophet speaking. His reaction to the anger and the tenacity with which God was using to speak. Verse 10. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourned, and pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their cause is evil, and their force is not right. It looks to me like Nigeria. For both prophet and priest are what? Profane. Both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness. Therefore their ways shall be unto them like slippery parts in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall into them. For I will bring evil upon them. Even the year of their judgment, said the Lord. 13. And I have seen falling the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal. Look up. They prophesied in the name of who? So not everybody that looks at you and says, You are Pastor Alpha. And you say, Yes, sir. The Bible says there are some prophets who prophesy and there are many of them in this country deceiving the sheep of God promising you all kinds of things. I hope you are ready tonight. I like the way God deals with you. Sometimes he doesn't tell you how he will come. Then you receive it down and it keeps you down. Let's hurry up. I have also seen the prophets in Jerusalem. So he was listing prophets everywhere. The men of God in Zaria. The ones in Abuja. The ones in Port Harcourt, The ones in Wari. Then the legion of them in Lagos. They are here. The Bible is talking about them. He said an horrible thing. They commit adultery. And walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers. There is no place like the church of Nigeria. Where we strengthen the hands of evildoers. Any Tom, Dick and Harry can go anywhere. Loot from the national treasury. Enter our place and buy a jeep for the pastor. Suddenly he becomes the Holy Spirit in the church. Directing the affairs of men. The Bible said they strengthen. A man comes and meets a man of God. And says, uh, I'm about to embark on a trip or do something. Prophesy to me. Let me tell you something. Do you know because you have an unction from the Lord, you can speak over people and bless the works of their hands and it will prosper. But the Lord will hold you accountable because with that gift came discernment to glorify Christ alone. Hallelujah. He says that none doth return from his wickedness 
and they are all of them like Sodom and its inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make their drink the water of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth in the land. 16. We'll read to 19 and stop. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. I hope you understand the context now. It's talking about the false, I like the way Amplified puts it, it says the false prophets. He said, don't mind the nonsense they are talking about. Doesn't matter how flamboyant it sounds. He said, they make you vain. And they speak a vision in their own heart. And not out of the mouth of God. Everybody stands on stage. I was sleeping this morning and the Lord woke me up. And all, the Bible says they conceive that vision in their heart. Whose God is their belly? That vision was built from the hunger in their belly and not from the voice of God. Verse 17. They say still to those who despise me. In other words, it shall be well with you. People who are obviously perverting truth because they drop prophets offering. They buy you a suit. They take you to Hawaii and you say it shall be well. A man is stealing another man's wife. You know it. You are aware it shall be well. The apostate church. The Lord had said, you shall have peace. That's what they are saying. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of their heart, no evil shall come upon you. Is that not what a lot of people want? That's what we want. That's what we run to church for. Man of God, I came with a small offering. Then the man says, bless you. I see the Lord is showing me something. Oh, glory, glory, glory. And now you begin to jump. Let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. Because the Bible says, it didn't say they will diminish. They will keep increasing. And if the church of Christ is not built to be grounded, then there is trouble for us in Nigeria. 18. For who had stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard his voice and had marked the word and heard it. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Verse 20. Let's read on. The anger of the Lord shall not return until I have executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. Verse 21. Everybody read it together. One, two, read. Yet they ran. I have not spoken to them. Yet they prophesy. Is that in your Bible? Or you removed it this morning? He said, I have not sent them. Joshua Selma Ministries International. I was sent by Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah, all kinds of things. They say, my God and my king. He spoke to me this morning. He said, build me a people. And they are destroying the people. He said, I have not sent them. Yet they did what? They are not even walking. Boy, there are ministries running in this country. One year they have established 30 branches. Everybody is running. The same deceit. The same perversion. And God's people get ensnared. Gullible because Satan knows how to lure you. He uses your lust and your needs to lure you into a trap. If Satan knows you don't like ladies. He will not bring a woman to you. What for? It doesn't work like that. He's smart enough to know that we respond to our needs. Hallelujah. The apostate church. Some of you belong to these churches. Some of you have enjoyed the things that they do. They have taught us a lot of error. They have deceived a lot of God's people. Right now, everything in the church of the living God is money. Money can do everything. The front row is determined by how many money makers 
or partners your seed is equivalent to your faith let me with time i'll be showing you where these doctrines came from because god has been speaking to many of you and there are many of you that are just waiting to finish abu so that you establish that kind of ministry you have planned it you have calculated it you have seen that it's 1.5 that will be your own every month you have you have drafted it and so you are crying they say fast and pray you will get power you are praying right now not because you love god it's part of the tools to add to the apostate church and i'm speaking to great men and women There's a lot of deviation from the truth of God's word. And many of us have seen it. We love it so much. We like a congregation that comes to massage our evil doings. And the house of God has been turned into a place of entertainment. Nothing wrong with joy. In his presence there is fullness of joy. Not fullness of foolishness and stupidity. hallelujah there are all kinds of nonsense that happen in the church there are football fans that sit in church seats kept for them arsenal fans man you they give offering according to everything they shout hallelujah according to their what what is going on in the body of christ how come we don't have a voice that can rise to speak we laugh at these things and it's misleading us there are men and women in the body of Christ whose job is to match make the pastor's wife it is the one she sees and she says Sam you are the head of worship uh, Zuera you always smile every time Sam raises a song you must marry him any other thing is not the counsel of God now let me tell you something as you are laughing make sure the Holy Spirit is sinking this thing into your spirit because it's happening hallelujah we have all kinds of people the church of god has become a dome for people to look for contracts every tom dick and harry comes and tells the pastor he wants to sit down near this manager that comes and they say turn to your neighbor and say what do you do and the man of god let me tell you something judgment will come upon the house of god oh i assure you it will happen as surely as the lord lives that's why the church in this country has no voice politicians know where to run to for security they loot from the national treasury and know who to run to a prostitute comes to meet you you are praying for her you are seen in the spirit she's a prostitute why don't you call her in love and let her give her life to christ that will cost you what she's about to give you the prophetic seed The Bible tells us that a day will come. Listen to me. I want you to know that a day will come. Jesus Christ is coming upon this earth. And I don't know who has deceived you. But I'm reversing that deceit tonight. There is something called judgment day. There are two kinds of judgment for your information. Let me balance the nonsense preachers have tried to preach. Number one. There is the judgment that he who has not given his life to Christ is already condemned those ones will not make heaven but there is the judgment that will judge the works of men are you listening to me so that one is among those who are already believers the word judgment should not scare you is bringing into accountability Matthew 25 don't open it there's no time but I'm showing you that there is such a thing and the Bible says to those found worthy in the age to come they will be made to rule over kingdoms hallelujah we have taught all men all kinds of things you are the god of yourself bring out the giant within you you are one with christ i like you to say i'm jesus everybody shouts i am jesus i like you to say i'm the galilean and they say i'm the galilean the doctrines that make the apostate church because this is exactly what satan did in Ezekiel 28 he said I will exalt myself above the stars of God 
every time you sing a song and you say lord be magnified a lot of people say ah you are a new creation you should step into god push him he will push you even when you do something that requires true remorse to have a contrite and a broken heart Say there's no need feeling bad. Come on, walk up to that. Touch your, your, redemp your redemption or whatever you touch. And, and smile back. And so the leader of the choir is sleeping with every lady in the choir and touches his redemption back and smiles. Let me tell you something. There is judgment that is coming upon the house of God. Yes, there is. And it's going to come and it will start with we the men of God. And it will spread down. Do you realize that one of the talent that was collected was collected from one of the servants, not an outcast? Many people's giftings, ministries, and many things will fade before you. You will see it come in the days to come. Many prophets will arise as before. Suddenly they will see that the heavens have been closed. For what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with dark? writing exam 100 level my practice took you to 200 level you said glory i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus what is your concept of the sacrifice of jesus christ can i tell you something when a man of god stops preaching the things that he used to uphold he has started falling victim into that are you listening to me when a man of God cannot stand and preach holiness and righteousness, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? It says, he that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. We want things from God. We want prosperity. We want money. And so we have been taught that a shortcut to it is to tap into the anointing of the man of God's life. And so what happens? We just sit down. We don't do anything. Right now there are prophets in Abuja that collect what we call battle seed. You pay and they labor for you in the place of prayer while you go about becoming the apostate church. So they pray. You pay them on payrolls. The man of God has prayer band praying for him and is there traveling around the world as if he's a tourist drinking juice changing every kind of thing trying all kinds of wine and then he comes his suit is fixed and he just flips through the scripture uh, let's look at Mark today he just shouts and for three hours of God's God giving time to his people stand there waste people's time you know how much I bought this suit? You people don't know. You are not yet in that level. And people laugh. Let me tell you something. It's time you begin to frown at some things. Are you listening to me? Because many of us, they have become mentors unto us. We love them. We admire them. Every time we see them, you imagine yourself marrying them. That imagination is certainly not from the cross of Christ. And there's need for radical reediting. Many of us sit down and you already listen. They teach we young people all kinds of things. Get rich quick. Do everything. Breakthrough can come for you in one week. I see my car. Look, I know what faith is. I'm not telling you that there is no place for faith. I teach about faith here, don't I? But I'm telling you there is a straight line between faith and foolishness. Are you listening to me? God sends the man to carry his tithe and go and sow. And he uses from the tithe. And the remaining 20%, he comes and explains everything to you. He says, God is a merciful God. Just take this one and just use it and use malt. And with this effort you are doing, just use malt and wash your mouth. Say, ah, ah. 
my son, my son. You laugh over it. Right now, the poor in church don't have a voice. They are the ones who don't have faith. They are the ones who sit outside. Who is your father? Who is your mother? They are apostate church. We are laughing about it. Many of us are enjoying it. Many times they begin to teach us demonic things. What they are teaching many people is what the Bible calls new age. New age. New age. They teach you all kinds of principles all in the name of the prophetic. And many people truly begin to enter into the realm of the spirit and walk into all kinds of demonic things. Schools of prophecy where they gather people and pray and say, now Aaron, what did you see? You must tell us what you saw. And then everybody truly begins to see every kind of thing. And we use those things and pervert the body. And you look at somebody who is not called into the fivefold ministry and say, Steve, I see prophet in your name. From today henceforth, move in, the, in your might. And Steve is struggling because the grace is not there. And then you tell him to amplify his prophetic by bringing a seed for you. Now he brought the seed. How many of you have given seeds to fake people and you did not get the result? Everybody that blessed a true prophet of God in scripture received a prophet's reward. Many of our parents work hard only to come and vomit all the money in the presence of gullible and wicked prophets. By the end of the month, they are in your house. They came for a prophetic instruction. They gather everybody out. How come people cannot think in the church? A man of God looks at a lady and says, strip naked. Quickly, quickly, is a prophetic instruction. And you see her hurrying up. Nonsense. The Bible lets us know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. Are you listening to me? A more sure word. It will not contradict the spirit of Christ. For the testimony the testimony of Jesus is the true spirit the motivation behind every prophetic word many believers right now do not have time for them and God you know why we are busy busy trying to look for money busy trying to look for husband and wife busy trying to look for jobs busy trying to do everything the Bible says, seek ye the kingdom and his righteousness. Those values are no longer preached. And we men of God celebrate it when people join queues and they are waiting for the anointing. And you see people as if Jesus didn't die for them too. For hours, they are helpless waiting for the stepping in of the man of faith and power. Joshua Selman. I'm not saying don't respect men of God. But why have you made them gods to your life? Hallelujah. A man marries his wife. The man of God will not let them flog out their issues and enjoy issues. Everything that happens, she will come to tell the man. The day she's pregnant, the man will know before her husband. Let the husband go and eat the baby. Where are we going? The apostate church intelligent men and women become brainwashed in the church and we begin to do all kinds of things the Lord must arise and help us are you listening to me the people have come to a point where we love it so we are not ready for growth and any minister of the gospel that stands for this truth unconsciously the seed has been planted and we begin to hate those people i believe in new creation realities i have been blessed i believe it till death i believe in the operation of faith we talk to people and tell them nobody should die when somebody dies the church does not take responsibility they say go and bury the person it's a shame to our church we are the ones who live forever. And they leave the person sad, helpless. Going and he goes to meet his orthodox church that we always laugh at. 
and then they are the one who conduct the funeral and laugh but let that person's business blossom and you will see claiming of members sheep stealing in the name of church planting everybody everybody becomes a son how come blind people are not spiritual sons to men of god but they are in our churches how come the ladies who are not fine are not submitting to the people everybody looks for the best the choicest and we yoke people with all kinds of demonic doctrines tonight there are two categories of people in this place those who will say and say this nudging in my spirit it has been there is a cry of the spirit and those who will just laugh you want true prosperity you want true power there are many young people in this country that we have been taught that a process is as a result of lack of faith so we teach people that now faith is if your faith is working the jeep should come now and somebody in 200 level is converting jeeps angry he will not sit down and read his book just shouting because we have misled them and a young man who has 50,000 that's all the money his poor parents gave him he comes to school and we put them under pressure because he's the head of department you must buy this suit with 45,000 to match our status may God have mercy on his church some of you have been victims of what I'm saying to a point that you are now enjoying it the man of God may not be fake but it does not justify the principles he's using hallelujah and the Lord brings us to help us know him righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne many people right now every time you talk about bible study a time of building in the world people begin to frown but once you talk of breakthrough night a night of receiving and taking take yours people say yes this is the kind of thing i like encounter with the spirit of elijah then they'll put semicolon speed yes we like it everything that bypasses the process of greatness and can i tell you something many of our parents look at us although they are not filled with the holy ghost but heed some of the warnings they are giving they may say young man i may not know god oh but i know this is not how he works Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel when you come to reign we do not have people who can stand for christ and stand for truth they say if you cannot beat them do what many of you are hoping to finish school now and run to abuja your blood is already hot Fanaya project. Hi God, let me finish this thing. See, I will shake the country. So every time they are saying you are blessed, in your mind, what you are thinking is, let me go and invade everything. Can someone walk up to you and drop five million naira over the integrity of your faith? Can you look at it without praying about it? And say no i love god more than this don't be too quick to smile and nod your head because many generals who have fallen gullible were disconfident are you listening to me where a man will steal another woman's wife and come to meet you and say pastor bless us 
uh, as a token of my appreciation i have one small one you are not doing introduction you are a man of god and so you tell them i love you but this is the position of the word of god and i will not compromise it may cost you your fame it may cost you your reputation you may not belong momentarily notice what i'm saying there are many of you right now on account of your faith people have called you stupid because you are doing the things that god wants you to do that guy wanted to go out with you and he was so rich but you went to the lord and god said no way and your friends insulted you they say you you are the most stupid lady we know in this day and age can't you collect his money and go what is there about him sleeping with you but then you stand for truth can i tell you something there is a name that god is called he's called the lord of sabaoth and he's about to step in and prove those who truly love him can i tell you what the lord showed me one time i shared it that the works of men were like heaps hallelujah somebody told me about it and then i forgot about it one day when the lord showed me surprised me many men came to stand and their works just like wheat in the harvest and fire just passed it and then you just see something little left that's the real thing that they are doing for the kingdom can i tell you something you can live and be a billionaire in this life you can live and be an influential person you can have a church membership of two billion people but it is only the degree to which you walk consistently with god that will make sense in the realm of the spirit are you listening to me so many of you who have been taught that god's way is just to make you a millionaire overnight calm down there is something called a process sow your seeds today build your life today many who cannot stay with the holy spirit you can't study for five minutes because you have been taught that you need to hurry up there is no hurry in this life you know why i'm saying that because those that have been moving according to god's pattern will turn and find out that they are ahead of those who have been deceiving them there are many churches and ministries you are seeing today the day their harvest begins to come it will shock you because they are laboring bearing root downwards there are many men of god you hear today i remember years ago years ago abu has changed years ago you see a man of god small grace you touch one sister and she falls you see one pa one pa one this one that i remember those times i used to be quiet and i'll lock myself somewhere i was walking in the anointing walking in grace encounters with jesus but i knew the bible says john remained in the wilderness until the time of his appearing many people came with visions and prophecies josh we saw you in a tv station pfn remember pfn said they wanted to give us room to start eni in one of their branches all those things look like expansion in ministry but i knew that was not the season of appearing are you listening to me many of us have short-circuited our dealings and our trainings with the lord because we have been taught a false doctrine a false gospel when god is dealing with you and he has not finished you jump classes in the spirit now you come and establish a big ministry and those lessons you would have learned from the classes you jumped will bring you back and retrogress you in ministry even at the height of it every young man who can wear suit they just call him and say kneel down pour oil on him and say stand up i saw the gift of the spirit on you you are a, you are a pastor 
you are an apostle and now this guy just got born again six months ago and they say forget the harvest is why the babylon in him has not finished dying now he stands on stage and he sees lara very pretty lady and the old man cain is attempting to resurrect when abel is preaching and that guy is struggling on stage he's laughing then he says come into my office and tomorrow you hear that something happens and people will say how far moses stayed 40 years in the wilderness let me tell you something friends we must return to the order and the patterns of the spirit if we want to last and be great a lot of people do not go through the dealings of god suddenly one breakthrough comes they step into prosperity and they become fools the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them because they do not know the purpose of the blessings they were not taught are you listening to me tonight god is searching our hearts because he wants us not to be the apostate church there is a church like that in nigeria i don't mean a denomination i mean a group of people parading all kinds of beliefs the church is becoming a psychological thing right now you go to churches and you see the the drawing of anatomy and they're explaining every kind of thing your subconscious mind your inner conscious mind the other one that is there when you are hot information goes through this place what is your university for And then the man laughs and says, Ah, so this is the side of me that makes me like women. So it's not even bad. Hallelujah. And we try to teach people principles of metaphysics and Christian science, mind reading. A prophet just comes and says, Come, Josiah. And Josiah comes. He said, now everybody watch. Wave his hand and Josiah goes blind. And people say, wow. That is certainly not the spirit of Christ. Because among all the things that God gave man dominion over, man was not mentioned. Are you listening to me? So that we tread the path of destiny with care. Knowing the word of God. Herbalists have found out that they are running out of markets. And they now have left their, their herbal joints. And one suit. And said, if you will not come to us, we are coming. There is a mountain in Abuja. I think Manasseh will tell you. When you go there, they give you stones. And you throw if by any means your stone does not hit the tree that you are trying to throw you will know what brought you there so you want to marry or you want this they bring it and and you throw and if he hits it you will rejoice a man of god says in the name of prophetic instruction bring the photo of the lady or the guy you want to marry or the kind of job you want they say bring it now there is a place for that but this is where the boundary crosses they say now put your seed upon it and bring it put candle on top go around it seven times do all of this is that not what native doctors are doing i don't care who is doing it there is a name it's called witchcraft and manipulation that's exactly what is going on and many men of god are already building cabals there is the cabal of the prosperous ones. There's the cabal of the handsome young men of God. There is their group. They are the ones who can shake ladies. When it's time to pray in tongues, they come and stand and do all kinds of nonsense. Tonight's message is ringing a bell in your spirit. We are going to pray. We have to be out of here. So, the apostate church. And there is a warning. It says that if you do not stay and you take on these doctrines many churches have now become business centers different kinds of anointing oils different kinds of
breakthrough handkerchiefs different kind of prophets mantle they line them before you while service is going on and they tell everybody just come according to your needs but i know in my bible that there was a time that a particular sorcerer a man wanted to buy power from peter and he said thy money perish i'm not saying don't buy tapes don't buy anointing oil but if your purpose i went somewhere and the man was marketing books and he says that if you don't buy this book something will happen to the people after three days and you need to see the believers intelligent people some doctors everybody rushing why can't you just say this is my work i have labored and you can honor me and honor what god is doing is that not honest enough what is wrong with saying koinonia um if you consider me to be a servant of god bless me come and stand and twist truth the bible says handling the word of truth rightly Men of God have gone to the extent of receiving all kinds of powers. There was a case in Kaduna. I'm sure some of you heard about it. The man of God that had a special anointing oil. That he will rub on himself. As he's stepping into the church. Come and see power. Everybody falling. Because the Greeks seek for a sign. Hallelujah. And one day. He forgot to put the oil. And then when he came, he told his assistant to quickly run and check somewhere up and bring the oil. And it so happened because of morning service. The assistant pastor didn't take his bath. He would bath later on. And his body was white. He said, Kai, let me just quickly, this kind of embarrassment. And the guy just rubbed the oil. Small. As soon as the assistant entered, the power of God began to break out. And the Jew said, you touch that oil, have you? Not fiction, not fiction. To the point that the church of Christ cannot even know the difference between a true man of God and a false man of God. A right spirit and a wrong spirit. Anything God cannot give me, I cannot get from anybody. Anywhere he cannot take me, I cannot go. You must come to a point. The, the higher you go in the spirit, the more dependent you are on him and his word. He said, I love your word more than my necessary food. We must train a word-carrying church. Hallelujah. Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change. For your honesty in your job place, you have not been promoted. Wait. There will be the time of appearing. Let me tell you, when God promotes you, no man can demote you. When a man promotes you, you will need him to keep taking you higher. But when the king of glory, the one who watches over his word to perform it, lifts you, you are lifted forever. There is a relationship between praying in tongues staying seriously with god's word diligence a life of purity and holiness and the anointing of the spirit when you see a man moving in the anointing and you do not see these traits something is wrong there is no guesswork about the anointing there is no guesswork about the word of god are you getting blessed tonight the apostate church tonight many of us need to deliver ourselves from religiosity and traditions of men that stop us from stepping in when we begin to examine the book of revelation we'll talk about the seven churches and we'll examine everything that the lord forbade in their lives but tonight my call is that judgment is coming upon the body there is judgment that will come upon the body and many churches will be affected many bishops will be affected many men of god will be affected many apostles many prophets will be affected not because god is a wicked god because the people of god have been perverted from the ways of god 
it's time for everyone to get up and know God for real know his ways let the word of God not just become an instrument of devotion for you in the morning they are life to those who find them it must become your life that you say if I perish I perish faith in the operation of God's word if God has said you are blessed you are blessed if God has said you are lifted you are lifted it doesn't matter what ABU tells you it doesn't matter what your parents tell you his anointing is upon your life you may not look like it but the word of God tells you you stop running from pillar to post looking for endorsements the word has endorsed you it has called you the head and not the tail above and not beneath we need a generation of men and women who when they come to bribe you you will say no no bribery no corruption where if God takes you to a place of government you will stand for truth you will stand for justice you will stand for equity at every cost Job said though he slay me yet will I praise him no bribery that you are seen you are in the exam hall no malpractice you know that you can copy and get an A and it will shift you from 2 to 2, two 1 and you say no I love the Lord not it does not matter my spirit is seated with Christ my body is seated in hell hallelujah where you believe the Lord where you stand for what is true the values of the kingdom the church has become a secular place any Tom, Dick and Harry that produces any album just jumps on your stage and because we are looking for fame we don't know the difference between Zion and Babylon again the sacredness and the purity of the word of God and the songs of the spirit and by the way let me correct what you are saying many of you say eh, he's talking about rappers I love rappers that are born again spirit filled people so let your religion not even think is what I'm talking about I'm not just talking of those singing him I'm talking of those who are truly born again filled with the Holy Spirit that Christ has become the center of their lives that whether through raps through music whatever they know that they are not just musicians and guest artists using the church as a ladder to climb to greatness but that they love God for real that when they come out to minister I was listening to an interview by Frank Edwards I love him so much they say how do you write your songs he said I don't write my songs I spend time in the spirit and I receive them right now everybody wants to get money you just sit down and conjure one album Jesus, 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 you're my Lord, you're my Lord, Jesus, Jesus, and no life, death, standing and shaking itself in the church, and people are just nodding, they are just enjoying it, no life. No life. The person finishes his song and runs outside, and is laughing, he's saying, man, people should give me my honorarium, let me leave, I have another meeting somewhere. And he said, you must give me my money in this place so we'll drag this thing. Many of you are seated here. You are musicians. You are music ministers. The reason why God has not lifted you is because you have not listened to this message. Until he flogs out flesh and Babylon in you, then the glory will begin to come by itself. We want a set. See, let me tell you why I shout and I say these things. Because now I have access to you. Tomorrow I may not have access to you. You will be too busy. So I kill it and bring it as hot as it is. So that you can listen. It can sink into your spirit. You may not like me. But tomorrow you will bless me. You will put my children in your school because you are happy. Your responsibility will make you a blessed man. There is nobody who laughs during training. 
It's only in the church people laugh during training. They are happy. They say you are lifting weight. You want to compete with the whole world. You are smiling. No. Go and watch the Olympic people. For the place of training is a place of sacrifice. Sister, I know you are pretty. But permit me to flog out Babylon. Flog it out. So that your beauty can be as gold. My brother, I know you are nice. Let me flog it out. By the time I do that, let me tell you something. You will stand strong. God can make you the entrepreneur. You will be the next or third or last and the rest. But then, you will be a strong person. This time around, you will be able to stand and tell the world. And say, I love Jesus Christ. Next time, some of you will be the bishops. And you will remember. You will not be some of the bishops we have in this country with all due respect. You will know the difference between God and man. If this is my only assignment on earth, I am happy and I will do it honorably. Necessity is laid on me and the word burns in my spirit like fire and I must bring it out as it is. Come out from among them and be ye separate come out the language tonight is come out from among them be ye separate don't adopt those philosophies i'm not teaching you to be critical that every time you go to a church you are just trying to watch the mistakes of the man of god no 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 god does not use perfect people his glory unwraps them and then brings them to a place of grace where they are dependent on his grace However, there are some things that are not mistakes. It's called apostasy. The perversion of truth. Be careful the kind of men and women of God you allow to climb your stage. Men of God, be careful the kinds of meetings you allow. Now I'm not, this is, I don't go for any kind of ministration. Call it pride, call it whatever. People just come and meet you and through a phone, they say there's a meeting. Several men of God are coming want you to come and honor them the next thing you see your face in the middle of witches and wizards they use your presence to endorse evil so when people see you they say ah if joshua selman can be here that means these people are nice then after the meeting the people say ah i'm that joshua selman's friend come and meet me at home and they say yes sir the same respect that's what has been happening in a lot of churches a lot of things because of honorarium everything you just go because we are afraid of our reputation you don't scrutinize and question and make sure that everything is lined up in obedience to christ hallelujah thank you jesus this teaching will make you strong this teaching will make you great. I tell you the truth. It may not mean anything to you right now. But I assure you. In the days to come it will separate you. It will bring you grace. Listen to what I am telling you. It will bless you. I will not teach you what will destroy you. This may be a hard teaching. But can I tell you something? Hear the voice of the Lord tonight. One day you will know. That a preacher was shouting truth into your spirit. Your spirit bears witness. As painful as it is, your spirit tells you I'm not lying to you. I will tell you what many men of God will not tell you. That's why we respect God in this place. We know the boundaries of offerings. We know the boundaries of character. We know the boundaries of everything. It's supposed to model to you something. We may not be the best of people, but we are certainly not the worst. And I hope that you see a desire to love God. Can your life be true? Can you be a replica of the true Jesus life? Can the anointing come upon you? And the glory of God will still beautify you. Can God make you a millionaire and a billionaire? And his kingdom will still be advanced. 
can God make you an influential person in the government can God give you the anointing the power you want the fame the influence the charisma can God take you to the nations and still find your heart oh Lord I want to know your glory I want to offer a sacrifice of praise fill this temple Lord, with your spirit once again oh Lord we want to know your glory we want to be the true church we want to offer the sacrifice. Would you fill this temple, Lord? Fill this vessel, Lord, with your spirit once again. These are the kind of people that will step into prosperity. These are the kind of people who will step into charisma. The Lord told me something. I've said it here. That son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord told me. He said, if you let men see me. He said, if I be lifted up, not Joshua Selman, not Koinonia. Don't make Koinonia an idol. Don't make Ian I an idol. Don't make Joshua Selman an idol or any of the ministers. We are only ushers pointing you to the King of Kings. Like John the Baptist, we are the voice of that word that cries. We are preparing and making straight his way. If you come for Koinonia and all you end up doing is respecting Joshua Selman alone and loving him above God, we have succeeded in manipulating you into witchcraft and idolatry and God will judge us for it we must lead you to the king of kings the one who is above all that all of us will stand before him it's our job to ensure that you are successful in this life that's why we teach you on wealth we teach you on prosperity we teach you on faith we teach you on the principles of success it's our goal that you become men and women of character that's why we teach you on the fruit of the spirit we teach you on the anointing we want you to move and operate in the miraculous and the supernatural that you be thoroughly grounded and established in truth do not be unaware of the devil's devices we are going to pray and cry our heart to the lord and say lord deliver the church in nigeria and set us apart you're going to pray for your pastor you're going to pray for your man of God, your bishops. We are going to raise a cry. You will pray for we, the leaders, and say, Lord, keep them. Keep them. That 10 years from now, we will still be preaching this truth that we are preaching. And not allow jeeps and trips abroad. And millions and billions. Rise up on your feet, we are praying. Inside and outside, begin to pray. Pray and say, Lord, I come out from among them. I come out from among them in business, in ministry, pray, in governance. I come out from among them. I refuse to be part of the Babylon generation. I refuse to be part of the apostate church. That church that perverts truth, whose God is their belly. I'm driven by your passion alone. I'm driven by your passion. My heart pants for you in a dry and weary land. I love you more than ministry. I love you more than life itself. Pray 
Say, Lord, I love you more than success, more than titles, more than CGPA, more than anointing, more than marriage, more than relationship. Lord, you have won my heart. There's no going back. In life and in death, you have won my heart. Go ahead and pray. Those of you in ministry, pray. I refuse to teach lies. I refuse to deceive God's people. I spend time with the word. I spend time in prayer. I get the Rema word of God. I stand for truth. I stand for righteousness. I stand for grace. That the anointing of the Spirit, that the prosperity of heaven, that the blessings of God will find expression. Pray. We are praying tonight. We come out from among them. We will not bow to bear. We will not mix fresh and salt water. We receive grace. 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 To be generous in deed. Grace. Generals indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Now you are going to pray for yourself. And say, Lord, I dedicate my giftings, my skill, my ability to serve only you. Whether you are a musician, whether you are a celebrity, you are a five-pointer. Open your mouth. Say it. Don't look at me. Pray. Say, Lord, from today, I will never use my giftings, my anointings, my ability to serve Satan, no matter what it will cost me. No matter what it will cost me in business, in ministry, in your family life. Pray. I live for Jesus. I serve him alone. I serve him alone. No compromise. Everything that is not of God, Lord, take it away from me. Whatever, any fame, any prosperity, anything that is not of God, any association, take it away. Let only Christ be glorified. Any marriage, any relationship, any friends, associations, groups, sects. I love you more than silver or gold. I mean it. I mean it when I love you. Hallelujah. God is raising the end time army of real Christians. And that's our job. Finally, we are going to pray for the church in Nigeria. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your man of God. Pray for me. Pray for all the leaders. Say, Lord, keep them. Those who are already in apostasy, don't condemn them. But say, Lord, deliver them. Let light shine out of darkness. Come on, pray. Lord, we pray for your servants. Let light shine out of darkness. Every man of God, every church worker, Lord, we pray in Zaria, in Kaduna, 
in the north in Nigeria Lord we pray redeem their soul from the deceit of Babylon redeem their soul in the name of Jesus Satan the Lord rebuke you we pray for every church in Zaria Lord that they will stand for truth we pray for the men of God money will not take the attention from you fame, power charisma will not take your Lord step in in your mercy step in in your mercy and redeem the ministers redeem our businessmen redeem those in authority redeem our bishops our apostles our pastors our leaders that Christ the Lord will be Lord that we will love you above and beyond the things that you give us Hallelujah Hallelujah Listen to me I was coming in from Abuja this evening and while I was coming I was just talking with the driver only two of us and something happened a car just came nothing was wrong brake did not fail nothing happened this car just came to hit us and then it moved in front of us and rode right into a ditch i watched it it moved right into a ditch i just stretched my hands and i said lord mercy mercy that was all i was saying how that it happened nobody died in that car not even a scratch but i looked and the driver told me he said i've never seen a very strange guy like that and he was speaking to me a, a different person i took him from abuja and he was telling me he said shortly before this car came suddenly he had a vision just in a split second like an accident and then i told him i said there are some people that are too jealous in the hands of god god would rather a nation die for their sake this is the true basis of immunity in the kingdom not this i shall not die thing no there is how you can be so useful to god that God will swear by himself to defend you. Hallelujah. And while I prayed this morning, the Lord gave me a prophetic word to announce to the house. I never speak a thing until God tells me. The Lord told me something. He said, son, for half of this year, you have seen great grace. He said, tell the people to brace up for glory. Tell the people to brace up for glory you will see things that will happen in the next few weeks that will shock you will cause your ears to tingle if i be a servant of god and if i be called by god i prophesy this into your life and i declare that you will see it happen in your life you will see it happen in your family you will see it happen in your ministry the Lord told me to declare that it's a season beginning from this eight month, an unprecedented level of glory, of increase. You will see prosperity like never before. You will see expansion as a ministry, as individuals, in your businesses, in your life, in your academics. I tell you the truth and I lie not. The Lord God of Israel will confirm this in your life the season of glory that's what God told us at the beginning of this year he said great grace I'm not the kind of preacher 
that just sits down and laughs on the 31st and guesses what God is saying. No, it's in the bowels of much prayer and staying with the Spirit. If God does not tell me anything, I have no business announcing things. But let me tell you something you will see glory that will shock you. I say this, write it, mark it. If it does not happen, I am not called of God. The Lord spoke to me this morning. He said, you have endured the season of great grace. Tell the people to brace up for glory. Brace up for glory. You have trusted God. You have enlarged your capacity. We pray 21 days. Praying and fasting. You have heard the word. I tell you, prepare. Write it. Write it. You will see it with your eyes. Shocking things will happen in this koinonia. Levels of grace. You will hear men talk about it outside. Some will criticize it and say it's not of God. Some will say this kind of prosperity, this increase cannot be from God. But let it be that God declared it before the time. Lord, we give you praise tonight. We thank you for your grace. We choose to be the true church. Deliver us all, O oh God, from any form of apostasy. Let us be the true church. Oh, I declare glory. I hear it again in my spirit. Tell them it's a season of glory, increase, prosperity, blessings, restoration, enlargement. That's what the Lord tells me to declare. And I declare it as he speaks it into my spirit. Lord, you will hasten your word to perform it. And our eyes shall see and we will give you thanks. Hallelujah. You're worshiping with us for the first time. Thank you so much for coming. Please, quickly, we're out of time. We want to close so everyone can go home. Please leave your seat and just walk out here. You are special inside and outside. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. Please clap for them as they come. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Appreciate them as they are coming. Please find your way to the front. Don't be shy. Don't be ashamed. Inside and outside. Ushers, help them. Ushers, help them. Direct them. Keep clapping. They are still coming. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka na kata branda kate katos, kate branda kata pako tos koto pre kate kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.